Oh. Oh. Welcome oh. back, everybody. Hello. To the Push and Strangler Detective Agency. The LLL. The last L is a mystery. What does LLL stand for? Lewis and Lydia. Lewis and Lydia, but ah. we don't know. The last L is, we'll, we'll find out on the last street. Why are you calling it something different? Why are we calling it the Lewis you, and Lydia? You said it was the LLL street. I prefer like, I prefer like the kind of. I did, you, you named it that a few weeks ago. Lydia, no, but it's her surname, you see. Our surname? Lydia, Lydia Strangler <laughs> and Lewis Pusher. My mother christened me. She just threw, she saw these gigantic, when I was a baby, I came out with these size hands. Wow. And she was just like, wow. I was going to call her Strangler Lydia. <laughs> I actually changed my mind. <laughs> Look at those fucking massive hands. Today we're playing Night Call. Night Call. Now I, I saw this at GDC. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I saw it. I met with the devs. Uh, they chatted. This is a sponsored stream. Mm-hmm. If you're interested, you can buy it. Please click the link in chat. Uh, yeah. I also do need to tweet out that we are live. Yes. We'll do that now, Lydia, if you don't mind. I need to do it too because uh, certain someone was running a little bit late. Nothing certain, to do with me. What? Oh, I see. Um, Talking about you. I just hit my face. I thought I wanted to know. I just hit my face on the headphones. I went to put it on and let go of one side back accident and it swung back and hit me on the face and it really hurt. So I just knocked myself out of my headphones. I heard uh, you had some... You were a bit grumpy last night after <laughs> the main channel video went out. See, see, I think there's something wrong with Tom's camera because at the size of the screen, it like bulges out. <laughs> Okay, all right, hear me out. On the main channel, video's gone live where we're, we're, we're like painting some pottery. And then I was like looking at some of the comments and they were like, wow, Lydia, thick and stuff. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> like, so I was watching it thinking like, where, where, does this, this, where does this thickness show? And it got to the end. And because Joe filmed it on a super wide lens, yeah. I'm big. <laughs> I'm really big. I'm like, because I'm tall as well. I'm standing next to three shorties and I'm stretched. I look like, I'm big. And I was looking at it and I was like, <laughs> I didn't realize it would be and been filmed on a, a wide lens. So I was like, holy shit, is this what, I know I've just come back from America and I've been eating a lot. Is that what I like, you know, I'm like developing body dysphoria as I'm looking at it. Like, is this what I look like? I'm like seriously lying there. Like, well, that's it. I like, fuck, I didn't realize. And then I messaged Joe and I was like, Joe, I really hate to bother you. <laughs> but what lens did you use? And he's like, I used a super wide lens. And it's like, oh, thank God. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I got really just like, oh no. <laughs> I think what we should have done was, you know, in a school photo, you get everyone to queue up in like order of height. Yeah. And then the, they, they can put the highest people in the middle so it kind of triangles down. Yeah, it said we it's didn't like, do that. it's like Nina to me. We had it like a, a weird slope. I, I look at, like, watch the video, guys, at the end. I look. <laughs> Yesterday's your blog. <laughs> I look good. really big. Um, so yeah, I, when uh, when uh, Joe sent that back, I was like, okay, good. <laughs> I threw I threw the top away that I was wearing in it because I was like, this must be the thing. This is why <laughs> <laughs> I blame this top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn you. Oh God. But then Joe sent me this picture, and he was like, um, it happened to Nina too. But Nina's one, instead of making her like big, it made her look at her arm like she's been working out. She's got like one really Can you buff guys bicep. See that? Yeah. Like, like, like it's like a big old haunch of meat. Yeah. Like it. It. So it kind of stretched out her arm. Nina's quite a sort of thin, <laughs> fey elf. She's she's tiny. Like a like a boof. But yeah, she's tiny. She's a boof, but she looks hench in that. So I, mean, I felt a bit better when I saw that. I was like, okay, at least I'm not the only one that's been like warped into a strange <laughs> shape. I picked a plate because I'm a fat fuck. Yeah, so exactly. And then I help. said that at the beginning. I was like, fuck, you know, I really like set myself up for that. And then everyone sees me in full size and they're like, wow, she is a fat fuck. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> so we just have to get you some more... Um, more live action main channel stuff so people can see they can see the real me yeah <laughs> the real real me towering over Tower- st- I'm still really fucking tall like that's, that's not the wide lens doing it that's my height but yeah I, yeah I do I think a big sort of overwhelming consensus from that video is like wow Lydia is really fucking well, you tall see, cause you, can, you know how tall me and Ben are though because Barry was standing next to me I'm on, stand well, on the borderlands you. you know and he was like towering over me this is <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a little, uh, little young detective. Oh, this son. is I am like I am Hobbes and you're Watson. He's my son. <laughs> um, shall we play a game? 
Thank you. Oh, I'm not even that small. <laughs> I'm normal. He's I'm average height. I'm an average heighted man. Tiny when I went man. to Japan, I felt like a, a, a big man. Yeah, you felt like a big, big boy. Uh, a big man. Felt like a big boy. <laughs> I met uh, there was a fan yesterday in Sainsbury's, and he was six foot eight. I six think. foot eight. Like seventeen. Whoa. Six foot eight. And Harry was there as well. Harry met him, and Harry was like this. This boy was gigantic. Harry, Harry was, like, was looking up. Harry was like, uh, like he, his neck <laughs> never had to go that way, I don't think, for many people. Wow, six foot seven. That and, is um, really he big. He was gigantic. When you meet people like that, you automatically start thinking, oh, he'd be really good at basketball. Basketball. It's, so, it's, it's such a go-to thing for anyone who's tall. People always said to me growing up, like, do you play netball? It's like, no, I have absolutely no coordination or sports skills whatsoever. So you only, are you only 5'11"? You're not even six foot? No, 5'11". But no. I'm wearing flat shoes right now if I wore, like... If you wore your proper if flat I wore, like, I, don't have, I don't own any heels. But if I wore, like, my, my trainers. 5'11", I think. Yeah? Yeah. Should I, should I up? Right, night call. Should hook up. <laughs> my dad's coming in today. Oh. going to do some voiceovers. <laughs> Oh, well, there we go. Perfect timing. Because, um, <laughs> we should meet him. Let's see if you are as tall. Well, I don't think he is 5'11", I don't think. I think no. you're taller. Yeah. I Guys do that a lot, don't they? they? They add a few inches. Yeah. Well, you have to. <laughs> <laughs> right, night call. Here we go. Now, the reason this is going to be extra good is because uh, <laughs> you guys are going to help us make decisions on how we're going to, what choices we're going to make. Well, how we're going to navigate yeah. Paris streets and find the murderers. So I think there's like a series of, well, not murderers, but a series of crimes. Mm. I don't know. Actually, I, I, they sent a whole detailed email. And I'm like, I don't want to read this. I don't want to spoil it. <laughs> so I'm not going to. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. I, I don't want to learn about <laughs> stuff. Okay. Well, we've got three cases. We are the uh, taxi driver, and we're listening to different characters. Well, let's just play. The judge, victims of all something in common, and the motive seemed clear. But which suspect could have done it? Balanced case, perfect for a face first run. Okay. That's the one we want. Oh, choose a difficulty. Story. So story's money will be easy to get by. The investigation will be easier. Every action will take less time for a chiller experience. Balance the way. Or you could play balance then, the way it was designed. We're going to play story because oh. we are slow and chattier. Oh, that's true. When actually. you normally play balanced, you have You're to play a bit of game in. stuff. Yeah. And we're just going to. Okay, go I think we'll play story just because. They judge us. We take ages. Look, we, I mean, we are already 20 minutes in. We haven't started. That's true, actually. <laughs> that is true. If we, that's true. Yeah. Okay, all but, right. But, but you can play with a little bit more. Um, Gameplay. Yeah, like I it's think harder to like get more, money and stuff. I think you can sometimes, like, basically you're, you're a taxi driver. Yeah. And you can take on fares. And some people just, just want to go to places. They, want, yeah. they don't necessarily have anything to say. To story, or, yeah. or something they might say that you think, oh, that's nothing. But actually, it's quite... Super important. You know, we yeah. have to assess. Maybe I should get my notebook. Yes. Yes. I've got my phone ready to take notes. I can't hear any music. Can you hear music? I'm going to fetch my notebook. You do some voiceover. Okay. Taxi. okay. All right. Is there? Is that? Can you guys hear music sound of the game? No, I'm gonna stay here. <laughs> I'm gonna stay. I've changed my mind. Changed my mind. Okay. Well, I've got my phone. I can take notes on my phone. I want to watch this Frenchman smoking. I still need to actually tweet. So you just hold it. You man the fort. Um. There we go. There's very low sound. Can we get the sound up a bit, please? Thank you. And I think for the chat, for for chat as well. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Sweet, sweet. Um. Thank you. Uh, and I... Is it, uh, am I getting any sound? Actually, I can't hear anything. Is there I can't hear any sound. Yeah, actually, I say thank you, but I can't hear anything. Sir, come hear me, or do I need to speak up? Yes, yeah, speak up. <laughs> Can't hear anything. Is this okay with you? Really? Okay. Well, is my voice loud enough? No. <laughs> Louder. <laughs> and now? Is this okay? Yeah. That. Yeah. Well, I can't get any louder. <gasps> Sir, you just spent two weeks in a coma. The world bounces around your head. You need a moment to understand its meaning. The word. The word. I didn't. Coma. I said world, didn't I? <laughs> the word. We've been in a coma. The word scratches along your throat. Yes, you are the victim of an assault. The word resonates in your head. Victim. Victim. 
You you are aware a serial killer is currently on the loose in Paris? Serial killer. Serial killer. Serial killer. Serial killer. Wait a bit. Feel the contents of your stomach crawling up your throat. (laughs) Oh, grim. The judge, as the police call the killer, assaulted you. The bullet touched your liver, and in most circumstances, it would have been fatal. Touched your liver. Liver. Touched. Sorosis. Touched your liver. We chose to put you. We chose to put you in an induced coma. Her voice becomes more distant. Fades. You taste bile at the back of your throat. Mouth. (laughs) Your head is burning. You hear a whistle in one ear. Your fingers move to your wound. Underneath the bandages, you can feel hard skin. It is incredibly painful. Scar tissue. Scar. Bullets. (laughs) I'm sorry. Did they catch the judge? No. What about my passenger? He was dead before we even got out of the cab. Was it an assassin? <gasps> Don't resign it for a second. A very awkward second. She hesitates. The police would like to see you as soon as possible to ask you some questions. After all, you're the only one who survived the judge. Did we see him? No, he's in the hallway. attracts your attention. You try to turn your head to no avail. You need to rest. She leaves the room. Her voice resonates in the hallway. I don't care he's the only witness. He's... Another female voice joins in. A strong... Author... Author... author. You can do it, Lily. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> you can't clearly make up what she's saying. Yeah. Lily, not fucking read. <laughs> Wait. Or... Author... Wait. Author- Authority. Author... Author... Authoritarian. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Your word. Yay! A strange feeling washes over you. It's not pain. It's not fatigue. It's some combination of the two. For being in this hospital room, you'd never realise that anger was made up of a combination of pain and exhaustion. Anger. 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 A feeling you'll know all too well. Days go by in a month later. Honestly, a Parisian text driver. I feel, I feel like anger is like a big part of it. It's just job. his go-to, go, go-to, uh, like go-to his feeling. Daily, yeah. yeah. Get up. It's like a Starbucks. I reckon, do you reckon so? You know, like, there used to be a thing. Oh, hang on. We're going to carry on. Boss. Well, hang on. <laughs> Look, I got a bit of a problem. A real problem, that is. Actually, they're French, aren't they? Yeah, you got a, a Parisian accent. You, you have got... a pounding headache. It's your first night behind the wheel since... Says the attack. You listening to me? Are you listening to me? Are you, are you listening to me? You catch your boss's eye in the rearview mirror. Yeah. He stares at you for a second or two without speaking. Sometimes I wonder what goes on inside your head. That's what I'm doing. I'm tapping your head with oh. my pipe. <laughs> you always seem so far away. I think, yeah. Okay. Oh, that's you, sorry. Okay, okay. Go on, you reply. You do the reply. Okay, all right. He's watching you closely, trying to make out what's going on in your head. You know I'm worried about you, don't you? Don't you see? What is he... I know. (laughs) You're like a son to me, you know? I know. And you know he's he's about to (laughs) tell you the story of his taxi fleet again. When my father died and left me to store, I could have sold it. I could have retired. I don't know what's going on. Why, you, why have you gone to a southern I'm going man all sorts now? Of I thought you were like a the gangster. Place. I could have gone away. Interrupted. Uh, but you preferred. No, wait, what's French again? <laughs> <laughs> but you preferred starting your own company and hiring the local guys. Where is that? That's I, Russia. I try to do France. Wait, how's that? Je m'appelle Lydia. Your boss smiles. He knows he's told you the story a million times. Apparently, I can't do French. <laughs> and that's why I've got 45 guys work like you working for me. His hands flutter in the air. So none of them are any match <laughs> for you. He smiles. His voice suddenly takes on a serious note. Do you want me to go over everything again? He points to the equipment on the dashboard, the meter, the GPS. 
You haven't been in a taxi for weeks. Maybe you do need a little refresher. Sure. Yes. Go on, teach us how to play. All right. Right. The map. You spot potential customers and decide where they're going. I guess um, when a customer orders a taxi, if there's no one else around, you have to go pick them up. Okay. It's business. No problem. Um, the other fares, you look at the map and decide whether you want to take them or not. Then you drive. Seems very straightforward. When your shift is over, we do the numbers and, you know, see if you've, see if you've done anything. No overtime. We're in France and there are rules. Yeah. Oh, Wait, right. Really? Okay. So it was like some low level background noise. Yeah. We're in a city. Okay. Um, anyway, we got to sleep sometimes. And something's bothering him. What's the matter? He doesn't think we should be driving, Lydia. Aww. Murderous without. Uh, we think he's going to try and finish me off. Christ. Oh, crikey. Who's. He doesn't know who I am, but. You could have seen your face. I could be any. I could be any Parisian cabbie. Look at me. He's a handsome man. He did try and kill us, though. No wit. Mm. Your eyes look. Or did he? Are we the bat? Are we the murderer? That seems to be the way that it's gone for the last few times. Can you guys hear that drilling? It's very, it's loud. It's a powerful drill. I think it's like underneath. Someone's putting some concealing, maybe. Good night. Okay, so. Okay. Bam. The tweet is done. See you later, boss. Right. You're branded. You sit there a moment, then turn the key in the ignition. It's the remix to ignition. The hum of the engine sends a tingle down your spine. It's impossible to describe how you miss that feeling. It's back to the night shift, back to life, despite the attack, despite it all. All right. Uh, oh, who do we pick up first? That one, the closest one? Oh, the guy she's, she looks worried. I think we're going to pick her up. Yeah, she looks like she's... She's terrible. like... Uh. All right, it's 10 o'clock. Full tank of petrol and 327 euros in our back pocket. Chore Prévert. Mon Montparnasse. Parnasse, please. Six vous plaît. kilometers, 16 euros free. She wants to go there, because if we go down there, then we can pick up that other guy that's near there. Sounds good. You pull up to a local police station to pick up your next passenger. Oh my gosh, she's at the police station. <gasps> she's done a crime. She comes out from under an archway, visibly frightened. She slips into the back seat of the cab and gives you her address near Montparnasse. You glance her in the rearview mirror and notice how she's dressed. Oh dear. Oh god. Uh, everything, all, everything all right, ma'am? <laughs> you start the cab. She eyes you intently, reluctant to speak. Yes. You can barely hear her. She points to the car radio. Could I listen to the radio. Hmm. Yeah. Which which station? My wallet was stolen. Hmm. She fixes her eyes on you. You freeze. I have money for the fare. Mm-hmm. Okay. The passenger senses your surprise. I just wanted to tell you I could pay. She looks down. What kind of music do you like? Excuse me? What kind of music shall I play on the radio? Rock? I want some rap. <laughs> <laughs> Could you turn it to 89.4? Of course. It's just static. Are you sure that... Uh, hmm, a hint of a smile mm. plays across the mouth. Faint, but smile even so. Can you hear it? Does it sound of rain? Behind the sounds of legends mm. buttering, there is something else, a shifting sound. It sounds like uh, waves. Passenger looks up. That's right, there are waves in the background. Mm. It's perfectly natural, sir. Her sir gives you quite a start. It's the frequency that causes it. 
vibrate it's constantly dancing about pulled by all the incredible forces surrounding us most people listen to music to the news as for me when i work i like to listen to isolated frequencies like these they're broadcast but no one hears them the proof that we exist What do you do for a living, crazy? Or do you listen to free? Yeah. So, yes, I grew up with them. They helped me fall asleep. Mm. I listened to them as a young child. Oh. I'm starting to hear an accent. Every frequency has its own music. And every music its own frequency. The client suddenly straightens up and points to the radio. It's beautiful! So incredibly beautiful! Listen! You listen. You hear only static at first, and then, little by little, like a distant figure, the music takes shape and slips softly into your ears. Beautiful, isn't it? To me, they were gods, and that's why I studied science, and later, mathematics. I wanted to know why. You pull over. She gets the fare ready while you slowly turn up the radio. Beneath the layer of interference, someone is speaking. The voice of a child. Thank you. You emerge from your trance and take the fare. Your passenger exits the cab and walks away without another word. You sit there, immersed in the sound of the radio a while longer. It has a soothing effect on you. You start the engine and drive away. Wow, okay, that was weird. Is that, is that going to be to do with it or not? What do you think? I don't think that's anything to do with anything, no, do you? No, just a bit of a... I think that's just a, just a, just a cab ride. Just, just a... Is that a cat? Can we pick that cat up? <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Maybe that guy nearby. We can pick up a cat. Pick up the cat! <laughs> we noticed it when we were driving past. I'll take the overpass back. Yeah. Crookie. Crookie. It's going to give us $8. How's a cat? <laughs> you pull up on the sidewalk and wait for your passenger. <laughs> it looks like a no-show. You get out of the cab after a minute or two to smoke a cigarette. Of course you do. You're French. Mm -hmm. There's not much going on in this small town in the suburbs. There are a few apartments that have lights on. Sweet scent hangs in the air. Eventually you stub out your cigarette and get back into the car. You jump. Startled. A cat has managed to sleep and slip into the cab. Sitting on the back seat, staring at you intently. You sit there for a moment, considering whether or not to shoo it away. But just as you're about to wave your hand, the cat shifts positions and a slip of paper falls from its collar. Pick up. Pick up. You pick up the paper, paper and unfold it. A fragment of a map of Paris. Saint-Lazare train station. You turn your eyes slowly to the cat. He seems to be expecting an answer. Are you going somewhere? The cat tilts its head to one side to say yes. You, you want to go to Saint Lazare? Cat tilts its head again. Are you a dog? Oh, <laughs> what the hell is going on? Okay, fine. I'll take you. I feel like where we we are we tripping balls? We're tripping balls. <laughs> oh. That woman like. Play some frequency which confused our brain. <laughs> a few minutes go by, you try to break the ice. Simple question is probably best. Everything okay? <laughs> Are you meeting someone? No, that's not it. Cat okay, is staring at you. The conversation is to bore him. You seem to be well fed. Pretty strange, I must say. Did someone hurt you? Your owner? Hmm. What happened? Was it a man? A woman? Was she mean to you? Yes. She had other cats? <laughs> she was not around for you? Oh, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not it there. Uh, you like to be independent? You like to be alone? Your owner isn't. 
overly affected. <laughs> I guess, yeah. <laughs> she, that's it. She wants to pet you all the time, and you Excuse are just me. a cat that wants to be uh, independent. You have to be careful with people like that. They suffocate you before you even know it. Wow. But you, you ran away. I meet lots of people like you. Stop sure. But you're just a cat. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It is, uh, it is so strange. <laughs> well, what I mean is, well, we don't even know we are in a cage. The wisdom of cabin. <laughs> we prefer not to think about it. We are never fully aware of it. I must be crazy and dirty. I spent all day talking to cat. <laughs> <Dirty. laughs> you, are you an affectionate cat? Cat person? Oh my god, yeah. I just talk to them all day and cuddle them and have conversations with them. <laughs> First train doesn't leave for another hour. Where are you going? Mm. Let me guess. Let me guess, Elsa. If you were going to go to the suburbs of Paris, you wouldn't have needed to come into town. So, somewhere in the northwest of France. Uh, Normandy? Normandy? Somewhere by the sea, huh? Fresh fish. Ah, wow. yes, you're going on holiday to the fish market. Yes. Okay. Well, goodbye. Oh, no. No, we're carrying on. Cherbourg. Wow. Cherbourg. Saint Malo. Wow. Deauville. Wow. It's. Uh, amazing. <laughs> A cat's going to Deauville. Wow. Wow. You could just make out its shape dashing up a flight of stairs and slipping between the bars of a gate. I think that's going to be integral for us solving this murder mystery. Mm. You look at yourself in the rearview mirror. Your features are heavy with fatigue. Your right eyelid is twitching. As you start the car, you remember <laughs> you're allergic to cats. It's you. Oh, shit. Ow. Woo. Okay, well. That was eye-opening. Oh, she's just got in. That happened. But we're at the train station, so this is going to, ah. you know. The door suddenly opens, and a woman gets into the back seat. Go on. Busset. Oh, is that me? Yeah. Having a good night? For a second, you freeze. It's one of the cops working on the judge's Ooh. case. Sacre bleu. She grins at you. Her voice creaks. Mm -hmm. You remember seeing her at the hospital. Something already bothered you about her there. You know, it's actually pretty crazy. For weeks, I've been saying to myself, there's something off about you. Something not so nice. I dug around, mulled it over, bugged all my fellow cops about it, because I was sure you lied to us. I keep going to this Eastern European accent. I don't know why. She has a cold sneer on her face. I'm going to be frank with you. I don't think you're the judge. Nah, I just can't picture it. She squints like she should have make you out from far away. Like you'd have done, gone to the extent of hurting yourself. Yeah, between us, it's a bit of a stretch. She stares at you. But not enough of a stretch for my chief to stop going on and on about you. Seriously, it talks about you all the time. If I didn't know better, I'd think he had a crush on you. Yeah, she smirks. No, no, I think he's more interested in your profile. In prison at 17? And for murder, too. Well, that's not good. Mm. Since you've got that, you get the low profile, but you've been lying about your name and your address. I checked. It's normal, you'd say. They got word of your time served, no loan for your permit, no lease for your car. Meaning, no second chance at life. Her voice becomes softer, almost warm. I personally like guys who want a second chance. No, I like guys who fight for a second chance. Basically, I like guys who are willing to work for me. She leans forward, her shining cat-like eyes narrowing. She's the cat! She's the cat! She's what? a transform <laughs> magus. No! What is she called? The An animagus. The Harry Potter thing. My chief wants to go to the prosecutor with a first and last name with evidence. Actually, knowing him, he's not so hot on evidence. So I'll give you info. Victim, suspects, medical reports, some photos that are a bit... 
<laughs> you have to be discreet. Keep it between you and me. Interrogate. Ask questions. Dig around. I'm, I'm not a cop. <laughs> don't worry. You've already killed in half the squad. And don't forget. I'm not asking you to make an arrest and deliver the killer wrapped up with a bow in front of the station, okay? You're no Batman. You just need here to give me some more information. She rummages around in her pockets for seems like forever. Here, take my card. I'll call you in three, four days just to check in. We'll chat. And I'll let you know if I have any new info. She takes on a didactic, paternalistic tone. Glad you're reading this. Like she was giving you a list of recommendations for the hundredth time. Don't get caught. Don't get arrested. Also, I wouldn't recommend trying to leave Paris. I know what you look like, and I know who your friends are. You can either be the solution or the problem, my friend. She takes a minute to scan your face, your emotions. If I have to, I'll go check in on you know who. Voldemort? Ha <laughs> ha! Fuck, it is! <laughs> it's the bloody cat shape, shape shifter. Her smile is biting. That reminds me. She know you sometime? Shake your head. She snickers. <laughs> oh, my little dead fag, you cover your tracks well. What if I refuse? If you refuse? Simple. I turn you in. I'll send your picture to all my friends in the media and every asshole in Paris. Your picture with your name on it. Your real name. Anyone close to you will have their places searched. They'll be put under house arrest. They spend nights in jail. You have any idea how tense things are with that fucker's trial on the way? Oh, you sigh. You know exactly what she's trying to get at. Come to think of it, your last names are almost the same. You could be brothers, actually. I'm nothing like that son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Let me tell you, with that face of yours and your handle, they'll welcome you with open arms. Ugh. She takes on a serious tone, businesslike. I want to, you to, uh, wah. I want to catch this killer personally. I want to drag him to court, ruin his fucking life with a bang. I can't botch this case, you got me? And neither can you, right? Nope. Well, great then. We see eye to eye. So you could just say you're my informant, my CI. He ripped open your gut. You saw your own insides. You were in a coma. Yeah, you had plenty of reasons to want to get back to him. I could him. Whatever. Yeah, I think you're actually going to do what I tell you to do. You investigate, ask questions, listen to me all the rumors. Listen to all the rumors and you come up with a list of suspects. Easy. She lays her hand on the door handle and freezes. Oh, right. And don't get fired. Without this cab, you're worth nothing to me. You glare at her. <laughs> 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 you wanted to say it so much. This conversation never happened. I'll make sure you get more intel tomorrow. I'll find a way. Until then. Not a word to anyone, obviously. Not a word. Door opens, squeaks, and slams shut. Fucking beat. <laughs> <laughs> you sit alone for a while, teeth clenched, dry eyed, ears buzzing. Melt! <laughs> On the back seat, cop left a pile of papers. <gasps> Shit. Melt. Sacre bleu. Keeping the ocean in motor running, radio on, crackles. Turn it off. Start driving. Ooh, okay. Six clues discovered. Okay. So once we've done our first night, we can go and look through those clues. Hmm. This is our home. Oh, this must be our. Um, oh, it's our crazy wall. It's our crazy wall. So we're a, we're a cabbie. Yeah. Obviously, we got shot by the judge. He, like, he, ripped out our inside. He's killed open. other people. He shot us in the gut, but we healed up. Mm -hmm. um, in a coma. We're back on the street at night time. And obviously, we know maybe that's when the judge preys on people. Yeah. Maybe as a cabbie, we'll be in touch, in tune with, like, the local, the buzz. Yeah. You know? Okay, so we've got five. On the wall, you hang up the big cork board. Where you used to pin up photos of nephews previously, but now... They've been gone since you oh, got I out see. of prison. All right. So I guess we started a new life with a new identity. Yeah, we had to get rid of Varro because we murdered someone. Well, who knows what that was. A guilty party won't necessarily be the one with the most evidence, be the one with the most compelling evidence. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
It's like you're building a story about each suspect, trying to understand their motives, understand how he or she got into the situation. Yes. Your neighbor flushes the toilet. Out of the corner of your eye, you can see the pipes shake. Okay. Okay. Right. Oh, this is cool. I love all this stuff. So we have killer case, two faults of victims three and four. And then we have our our board with five names. Ooh, this is great. All right. This feels like we're actually properly solving a mystery. Elv Grayu, Grayu. Height, about my height. Homeless man with an unknown background. Briefly worked for Charles Charles Bougrain, who's the second victim in the nineties. Mm-hmm. Got health issues after the Richard in health scandal. Got a couple of arrests for breaking and entering. Right, so. What's the Richard in Richard in health? Richard in. Mm, I don't know. Maybe it was some sort of some sort of drug thing. Richard. Obviously, this is a Salim Wadian. He's a well-known lawyer from Saint Uen. Uh, defender on the Duar case. Defender of several molested kids in poor neighbourhoods. Was a promising football player when he was ten. So he. For some reason he's on this board. He's a well-known lawyer. Lawyer. Who's defended some people who were in bad ways. So he seems like a... This guy is obviously homeless. So a homeless guy who... Doesn't have drugs. much of a background. And drugs. Got a few, few small-time criminal activities. This guy seems like a legit lawyer. Who helps like people that need it most. Yeah, but we don't all do our cases. No. Piero Batanz. He's a cop. His dad was a cop. He died two years ago. His mum got health issues uh, after the same scandal. Okay. He's gay in a relationship, which I don't know what, if that's considered to be scandalous at this time. Never disclose this information. Um, this is Paul Marie Fragonard is another retired cop, divorced from a judge, moved to France, okay. And Claudia Campos, medical examiner, Escaped from Argentina when she was young, young lost her parents, the Argentinian junta, in the process. All of the process. The pro- Can we look at the Paul guy again? Born in the French and he's in France. Okay, cool. So he's just. So these people, we don't really know, don't know anything why they are on yeah. the suspect list. I don't really want to look at the autopsy reports just yet. Let's look at the crime scene. Oh. Oh, what's happening? I think it's going into somewhere. What? I'm holding to investigate and it just... Oh, are we... Oh, we're putting it up. Oh, my God. Okay, oh, this is cool. Okay, message on crime scene three. Time is up. You deserve this. Wait, are these all people that have been murdered? Yeah, hang on. Let's just hold. Let's just look at all this stuff. Yeah. This seems to like. It seems to give us clues, but I'm not sure where the clues, clues go. Got, I think they're just going up on that board. Maybe. Oh my god. Weapon was a rare gun used in the 70s. Well, he was a cop in the 70s, Paul Marie. So I guess these are like starting clues. Yeah. That we've been given. So. Victim four was killed by a rare gun used in the seventies, which could link to this guy, yeah. or this guy, for some reason. Because he's he's a lawyer, he might be able to afford to. Oh no, it's not linked to him. It's only linked. But the can rare you, you can move it? Can't kill his height one eight. Yeah, you can like make it. Oh, I see. Well, this is kind of completely irrelevant because they're all around that height. This is completely useless to us. Death execution. What is that referring to? Killer knew the victims or researched them. Justice. I mean, the word justice does link. So there was a message at crime scene one saying the word justice on the wall, maybe. Mm-hmm. You deserve this. Was this? Well, there was a message on crime scene two that said you deserve this. I guess this is just. I That's guess what we've done is we've been through the file and cut out all the snippets that we think are relevant. Yeah. Stuck them on the wall. And I guess if we talk to more people, they'll give us more info when we come back here. It will go up on this wall as well. So the killer left a message in chalk on the first three crime scenes. Okay. The so first the first one was justice. Justice, Second you deserve one, this. You deserve this. And time is up. And the third one, yeah, was time is up. 
which will. Why is that connected to her? I don't know who connected these. Can you change it? Like, if you. Is there any way from the actual pin board things? Like, can you move them or are they just stuck there? No, okay. There's no sign of violence on victim four. If you drop that on someone, does it connect to them? No. No, okay, it just highlights what's already connected to them. Hmm. Okay, so at the moment we just have a bunch of clues that we can't really connect, can we? We've got to go talk to people. Well, we've, we've started to dig into the investigation a bit. Look at this. So, the crazy board is That's already it. taking shape. We've got a lot of info. We think that the killer's height was, was this high. We think that he was this guy was killed by a rare gun, which is really weird. So, two cops have said that. So, the, this is like the cops' info. Cop. This is what they know. And the, all of the sources from cops, you see what I mean? Yeah, it's all two source. cops said there was no sign of violence on the fourth victim. It's a bit of a... Um, but the weapon is... The weapon used to kill him was a rare gun. This doesn't make any sense, does it? This. How bizarre. Victim's killed with one bullet in the neck. Who's that, the first what victim? The killer case. Death was execution, so literally it was like a you know, back of the head, like one shot kill kind of thing. What is this? I think that's just a move between... Hmm. Fourth you victim, death note, it. 100%. Yeah, someone wrote his name in the death note. Okay, all right, okay. With every hand, you wipe your tired face. Pull open the sofa, which unfolds with an unpleasant creak. You collapse on the mattress, okay. I mean, that's just dangerous. day, run through your head. The streets, the passengers, their faces, their problems. Your brain is running at full speed. Your body aches and you're in pain. You can tell you need to get more sleep. Glance at your investigation board, your crazy board. <laughs> it looks awfully empty. Tomorrow you have a chance to fill it out more. You shake your head and your mind wanders for a second. And your eyelids flutter at once and you're asleep. So we got a lot of rumors a lot of kind of a lack of evidence, a lot of speculation mm. with the judge character. There's a couple of dead people they found who appear to be killed by the same guy. I, I mean, there's one obvious person who's obviously standing out is the older cop. He was married to a judge. He would have a gun because he worked in that period. Yeah. He's standing out at the moment, I think. Maybe it's some kind of, like, revenge for something that happened to his wife. We sleep during the day. There's a, a point of interest Ooh. over here. Oh, and you can, like, refuel fuel yourself. Yeah. It's the night, so it's 10 o'clock. New night. O'clock. New night times. We don't need fuel. Maybe we just, just pop, go, pop Just go grab a guy. Up. We'll pick up a grab guy. Grab a guy. I think if you were an Uber driver, Lydia. Yeah. Would you want to, like... I think you just have to sort of... Just drive around wherever it takes you. I guess you don't want to accept things that drive you too far in the wrong way. Yeah, like once I did get an Uber from Brighton to London. <laughs> oh, this is a, this is that homeless guy. Oh, it is. Yeah, board. let's definitely talk to him. Ball. I've only ever had one woman Uber driver. Door opens. It's Elf, a homeless yep. man, like hundreds of others in Paris. You've known each other for years, and every now and then he asks a favour of you to drive him someplace. As usual, he greets you quietly. So he always seems a little on edge. Hey, buddy. What's up, pup? He has a strange verbal tick that you've never really understood. You start the cab. You look in the rearview mirror and you realise that he's clutching his left side. Well, all right already, Freddy. Is every... Mm, sorry. Is everything all right, Elf? He gives yeah. you a vague answer. Yeah, sure. Fine. Hmm. Pause. Can't help making a face. You're not really looking that great. 
Don't worry. Don't worry. I got in a little fight last night with this guy. But that's all taken care of now. Yep, all taken care of. He smiles, revealing a row of bad teeth. Uh, you, you don't... Uh, so what? Who was the guy? the guy? He doesn't seem to understand. Why? You know a lot of bums in Glitchy? Before you can answer... All you need to know is he took something that belonged to me, and he paid the price. He closed his eyes for a moment. So, yeah, he wasn't all that bad. But if you let someone steal your stuff, you're done for, sure. You have to show him you're tough, that you're a big shot. He pulls a sour smile. Sometime later, Pasture clears his throat. <clears> throat> uh, you wouldn't have to have to have a little something to drink, would you? You know, like they do in those newfangled cabs these days. She'll fail to even cars? Yeah, that's right. Right. I don't have any. Oh. I don't have anything. Sorry. This is not an Uber. <laughs> don't get free water. I don't mean water, you know. Oh. I realized that. Ah. Uh. Usually, you're not such a pain. Relax, will you? Questions, you know, I got those I got those morning, noon, and night. I'm sick and tired of them. He loses himself in thought. As you drive along, you see him struggling to keep his eyes open. They're more often shut than open now. <sighs> if we turn up the heat... That would make him even more sleepy. That wouldn't help, right? Yeah, he's definitely going to fall asleep. Your passenger gives you a sleepy smile. Hey, serious. You don't mind if I get a little shut eye on the way, do you? You nod. Enjoy. He gives you a smile, but it's still a painful grimace. Next thing you know, he's sound asleep. You continue to drive in silence, soothed by the warm air of the car heater. You pull up in front of a nondescript grey building. Your passenger immediately wakes up and looks around. Shit, this is great. I'm first. Where are we? An organization that hands out clothes for winter. I heard they were going to open a new... A uh, new shop, you could say. <laughs> and I'm the first one, huh? When does it open? Two days from now. Two days? <laughs> Don't worry, I have plenty to keep you busy. Oh, God. I found some books, one on yoga, and then a book by that old handsome dude. You know the guy who talks on the radio? It'll help pass the time. He gives you a tap on the shoulder. He reaches for the door and stops short, overcome with a spasm of pain. Fuck! Are you okay? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, don't, don't worry, worry. I'm going to take you to the hospital. Yeah, definitely. No, no, I'm good, good. He opens the door and gingerly climbs out. You should turn up the heat in your car, yeah. We freeze our asses off. Like we didn't really get anything out of him, do we? He just bloody slept. He's down a dark side street. Hmm. Sigh. Start the cab. Maybe we should have turned the heating on. Maybe. So he's gone. He's going to be hanging around in that area. Oh, there's someone right next to us. Might as well pick her up. Yeah. Hmm. So he must be one of... Maybe he's one of our informants rather than a... Suspect. suspect. Yeah. Well, I don't think he did it. Where is she going to the airport? No, she's at the airport. We're going Le Presson Gervais. Le Presson Gervais. Right behind La Villette. People oh, exit a downtown theatre. Two passengers climbing into your cab. Okay. Okay. They look a lot alike. No doubt, mother and son. Their faces have the same sweet expression, their eyes too. They say hello to you. The mother gives you an address and you start the cab. You look into the rearview mirror, something seems to be bothering them. Let's break the ice with yeah. a little joke. What did you see? She looks at her son, wondering if she should answer. An opera, a very beautiful opera, my son's favorite. He doesn't dare to look up. He's already a huge opera fan at his age. She gives you a faint smile as if to say, conversation over. You say nothing and focus on the road. It's not very late. There's still a lot of cars out. Traffic is slow. A few minutes later, she starts speaking to her son, her voice quiet, apologetic. I've been thinking about what you said, and I want you to know I love you. I didn't know what to say in there. I was surprised. I'd suspected it, but... 
Mm. We can talk about it later if you want. This is Sylvain. Oh, is that him? Yeah. All right, you be him. Uh, Mama, we can talk <laughs> about it later if you want. <laughs> Do you want to talk to your father? A pause. He casts a glance into the rear view mirror, but you're concentrating on the road. No, not right away. Another pause. I'm worried he will take it badly. She jumps in almost immediately. Oh, I shouldn't take it badly, you know. I know, Mom. I know. She glances at you. Smile. As if you had to go ahead, the mother nods. You know, I'm proud of you, really. He sighs. Mom, there's nothing to be proud of. Yes, there is. I mean, I... I'm proud of you. I'm sure you're going to turn out to be a beautiful person. He sighs again. Mom, what are you talking about? That makes no sense. Being... being... gay doesn't make you a nice person. It doesn't make you beautiful or intelligent or anything at all. But it does make you honest. No, not even that. It has nothing to do with honesty. It's like saying being blonde means you're honest. You know that's not what I meant. I'm sorry you don't understand me. You don't want to understand me. I'm just trying to tell you I'm happy that you... <sighs> I only hope you don't regret talking to me about it. Uh, of course I don't. Why would I regret it? I'm just a little nervous. That's all. I think I didn't know what to expect. Is that why you don't want to talk to your father about it? I don't want to talk to Dad because he isn't going to understand. He's old-fashioned. He's old He doesn't like the opera. He's very much... Uh, uh, he, does, he might not understand. I wanted him to come to the opera tonight, but he preferred to stay home. Huh. It's not really his cup of tea, no. Well, I would have liked him to come anyhow. He never makes an effort. For me or for you, for that matter. That's enough. I've already told you, you're far too hard on your father. Teenager withdraws. He works hard. He doesn't have a lot of free time. He spends all his free time playing tennis. He needs to relax. His work is very stressful. He's short-tempered and preoccupied, but it doesn't mean any harm. He has no problem with homosexuals, you know. Mm, I would hope so. Mother is rotten to talk. The glistening in her eyes is hard to make out. Sometimes you forget we aren't from the same generation. We grew up in another e era. Your father grew up in a house. I know. Without a TV, without a radio, and without internet. I get it. It's a conversation they've had before. The cab is nearing their address. I can talk to him if you want. No, absolutely not. I'll talk to him myself when I feel like talking to him. Fine, but I just want you to know I'm there for you if you need me. I know. Come on, cut it out. It's embarrassing. I'm happy, that's all. I want to remember tonight. I saw you during the opera. You never even looked at the stage. You were browsing pictures of cats on your phone. <laughs> of course I didn't. You seem so happy. I was relieved. I know it's going to make you mad, but I'm so proud of you. Uh, eh. It's such a French thing. Eh. 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 <laughs> you pull up to a modern <laughs> building and she gets out immediately. The mother pays for the ride and says softly, Sorry, it was a little complicated tonight. No problem. Thank you. The truth is, I didn't know how to react. I was worried I'd say something stupid, hurt his feelings. He's still a child. Uh, excuse me, I don't know why I'm telling you all this. Tianja knocks on the door. Are you coming or what? They get out of the cab and they wait by the building. I think you have the keys, right? Just a minute. Hold on. They disappear into the lobby. You drive away. Extremely posh mother and her French child. <laughs> yeah. Driving out to their luxury area on the edge of Paris. Yeah, ta-ta. Is that a dog? It's oh, no. It's a girl's face. It's just a white dog. Mysterious dark-haired girl or a computer executive or... Oh my god, is this one of the guys? Is that on the one picture? of the guys on the picture? I think so. Hmm. Mm, 
Should we do the guy that looks like he's in the picture, or is that too far away? <sighs> what do you think? Uh, well, this guy's popped up before. This guy, uh, there's something about him. If his picture came up on Uber, I'd be like, this guy. Look at him. Look at him. We've got to go and check out this guy, because I feel, I feel like it's a tingling sensation in my suspicious brain. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, okay. This, all right. I mean, that guy just like every something off. boring. Uh oh, he's hey, drunk. drunk. Can't drive. <laughs> Got to throw up everywhere. Oh, fuck. I don't think we want to take this one. Get <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought I was going to have to walk. Thanks for stopping. Uh, nod. <laughs> oh, crazy. Oh, crazy, crazy, crazy. He reeks of vodka. Cologne. Oh, it's crazy, yeah. One day you just realise you're useless. It's just same old, same old, you know. And then, bam! You get it, yes. Right. Uh, your seatbelt? Oh, shit, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh. From Sonia. Her name is Sonia. It was our third date. His eyes roll back in his head and a huge <laughs> grin spreads across his face. I haven't felt like this in ages. As he speaks, he pulls the hair <laughs> off his head. <laughs> it's a toupee! Oh. Uh. He runs his head over his hand over his bald head and looks as if he's never been happier. Oh, she teaches philosophy at my high school. I usually don't speak to her type. Oh, liberal freaks. I don't know, man. She had this strict way of walking, a serious look about her. She invited me for coffee at the end of school day and I had a ton of papers to grade, but I said yes. Best decision of my life. My whole life. <laughs> his eyelids droop and his voice becomes flatter. We went to the movies on our second date. Here it was Ken Loch, another liberal freak. She was really disappointed by it, almost angry. I knew she was the one who decided to get one more drink. She grabbed my hand and gave me that look like she wanted more. I didn't know what to do myself. Oh, I can't let my senior find out. <laughs> 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 Uh, sir? Yeah. Sir? Yeah. Monsieur? Monsieur? We have arrived. We have arrived, eh? Yeah, sorry, I must have dozed off. Uh, the bill? You watch as he straggers, taggers, staggers, straggers down the street. <laughs> and a long minute later, <laughs> he disappears into his building. That was <laughs> an art form, Lydia. <laughs> Lydia. <laughs> that was unreal. <laughs> Can I get claps? Can I get some claps in chat for that? <laughs> okay. Um, well, it turned out he wasn't on our weekly. He wasn't. Before. He was just a drunk guy. He'd gone on a date with someone he worked with. Keanu oh. Reeves or... Well, it's such a long way around yeah. to get him. Why don't we just cut across? Let's get him. He's only over there. Let's pick up this quick one. Oh, wow. It's odd to the next passenger straight away. This must be... Well, I will say this must be what it's like, but... You know, as a taxi driver, you must get a whole bunch of like different weirdos coming in yeah 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 every, yeah every it must be quite interesting mean, i do feel for like tax drivers who work friday saturday night and just picking up really drunk like larry it's a people. different kind of people isn't it yeah yeah i don't I, w I wouldn't i wouldn't really like to take drunk people either i hate really. that and you just be th especially if like when people are really drunk and you can tell they look like they're gonna be sick you just be thinking please don't throw up oh, sometimes like it's nice to just get one like one person and like chat to them or whatever but i think when when like you pick up a fair and it's like three or four people and they're all just shouting drunkily and singing yelling and yeah. at each other. Oh. Sometimes when I've had a bit too much to drink and I've got a taxi driver taking me home, I just don't shut up. I say, tell me about your life. Where are you from? <laughs> What's your wife's name? <laughs> <laughs> He's <laughs> doing anything like her. <laughs> <laughs> she was the one. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. So, oh, this is a lady. I thought it was a guy. Okay. Yeah. She looks pissed off. She does. Good evening, madame. What's her voice going to be? Aren't you kidding me? That's how you want it to start? <laughs> That's I'm not great. sure I follow. <gasps> <laughs> Naturally. But of course, if I were to say to you, October 27th. Oh. Ooh. That's the date the night of the attack. Could this woman be the judge? 10.46 p.m. No, the attack took place later that night. Does that ring a bell? <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, it does. Uh, yes, it does, miss. Uh, don't you miss me? <laughs> Not another word. Last October 27th, you were in this very cab, driving a fare, and you committed a crime. That's right, sir. A crime. What, what, what are you talking about? Uh, I'd spent the whole day working like an idiot for that rotten newspaper. <gasps> do you have any idea what I do for a living? <laughs> oh. oh, God. Oh. I'm a sub-editor, Mr. Uh, taxi Driver. I correct mistakes that a bunch of moron journalists make. There isn't a single one, not one, who knows how to write a proper sentence. <laughs> I'd had it, really had it, and on the night of the 27th, you cut me off. I almost died that night. Oh. He grinds her teeth, you shudder. I crashed my car, my boyfriend's car, that is. Same guy who made yet another comment about women drivers. Her neighbours called the police that night. I made such a scene. To think the guy dares call himself a feminist. <laughs> she pauses for dramatic effect. It's a disturbing smile spreads across her face. Just let her talk. Her voice is suddenly noticeably quieter, almost fragile. Next day, no more boyfriend. <laughs> no more car. No more boyfriend. Messed up a job interview Thanks, Karen. with a major <laughs> news outlet. A paper where people know how to write, where they follow basic rules of French grammar. Imagine just for a moment, I could have stopped correcting copy for a bunch of morons. But all because of you, because of your cab. Everything changed the night of October 27th. My life has never been the same. What, so we refused to pick her up or? I think we cut in front of her. Oh, I her. see. Forced to go live with my mother while I will <laughs> apartment hunting in this rotten city where tiny studios cost an arm and a leg. So I started looking for you. Oh, God. Oh, no. The back of your neck breaks oh, into a sweat. Oh, no. Started asking around. I bribed one of your colleagues to give me your number. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. There I found your address. Your first one, that is. Oh, but that's your business. What matters is, I did eventually get your other address. The real one. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, bloody hell. I admit, at first I was planning on going straight to your place. But then, just, well, just maybe to spit in your face or something like that. But then I thought, no, Ludivine. Maybe the guy deserves a chance. You never know. <laughs> so you're going to apologise. Go on, give it your all. Take your time. Take a deep breath. Go ahead. I think, should we just apologize? I'm kind of scared of her. <laughs> you get out of my taxi, you <laughs> bitch. I don't, I don't know, she's terrifying. I think we should apologize. Yeah, uh, I'm truly sorry. I'm truly sorry. I don't remember what happened that evening. Uh... But I was irresponsible. Irresponsible. Sorry for everything that happened since. Your car, your ex, the job. I'm sorry. <laughs> Say nothing else. <laughs> but you don't want to make excuses. See, she's diffused now. It's diffused. Shit. She heaves a sigh. Shit. Spelling all her anger at once. I don't know <laughs> what to say. You were... And I, it was, oh dear, I've run out of batteries. <laughs> oh dear, that was exactly what I needed to hear. I've been thinking about it for months, going over and over every second of the accident, telling myself it could have been different, less complicated, more, I mean, well, you know. I, I Actually, don't, I don't. I don't know. Can I get a bit more out of her? It doesn't matter. Thanks. All her anger has evaporated. Just like that. My boyfriend was a jerk anyway, then. This job, maybe it wasn't so great. 
She gives you a little smile. I tend to get all worked up about things. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I take things a little too far. Yeah. In Paris, I guess we are quick to forget about being nice to each other, about being polite. And for a taxi driver, you're a real sweetheart. Ha. <laughs> this is what I suggest. I'm going to exit the cab. I'm going to go for a little walk in the cold to get my mind off of things. I have to learn to uh, manage my anger. <laughs> so you me up. You don't play. And uh, you're going to just... See ya. Carry on. Yikes. All right. Briefly try to remember that night. Nothing, nothing but a vague impression of something behind you. The killer silhouette, a fleeting presence. You shake your head. There's nothing more than before. If only you had turned around, everything would have been easier. If you'd have seen the face of... And all at once, you start the cab. Hmm. Oh, Blimey. more people have appeared. Blimey. Closer. He's this closer to us now. Closer now. Should we go get him? Should we get Keanu? There's no, like... Oh, why do we have to go such a long route to pick him up? it's because there's... We're playing, like, an early build of this. But I think there's no route to get to him. You see? Right. I don't know where the... I think we should... To the sky? Let's try going to this. Whatever that means. Even though it's not got a route listed. I don't think we can. Oh, I think that's... A, maybe it's... Can go to the guy behind him? Or that guy? They're both quite a way out. Yeah, there's nothing we can get to which is particularly close. I don't know what this is. Go to yeah, this let's guy. go to this guy. We're right on the, s <laughs> right on the edge um, of our limit here. Right. Um, okay, I'm going to read some donations. Go for it. Okay, so Gariscus donates $5. Thank you so much, Gariscus. Says, hi, Lewis and Lydia. I've been missing your streams. Glad to see you two streaming together again. Thank you, Gariscus. It's good to be back solving crimes. We do need to actually get chat involved, don't we? we yeah. do that. I feel like we haven't had an opportunity necessarily to, like, get chat's input. Maybe at the end be. when we decide who did it, then yeah. we do, like, a straw poll. Yeah, I think so. Um, okay. Oh, um... Stygian, Stygian gal. Stygian. Stygian gal. Well, oh, I say Stygian. It probably, probably is Stygian. It might be Stygian. Stygian. I just can't pronounce any Stygian. words. Stygian. Stygian gal. Oh, my gosh. $50. Thank you very, very much. Um, it says, thank you, Lulu, and all your peoples for all your amazing work. M work. Much love from a long-time fan. Stygian gal. Shout out. Stygian gal. Thank you, thank you so thank much. Thank you very much. That's so generous of you. Thank you. I'm interested in what chat says. Chat thinks it was Lewis. What is this game? Taxi Murder Simulator says Best Asbestos. Well, they, so far, it's like, it's a lot of little stories, a little slice of life in like Parisian night. I'm really enjoying it. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff. And I, it's nice to just, I think it's at the moment we're just kind of absorbing, absorbing stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think we've yet to really talk to someone who has a big sort of. I think we ought to go to those points of interest. The, yeah. Because someone suggested that in chat. That makes sense. Oh, it's yeah. already 10 to 3 in the morning. Um, Sassy Pablo, thank you so much uh, for your $25 donation. Thank you. Says, greetings, Lulu and Little. You look spiffing. Much love to you both with all that's going on. I do have a question, though. I recently got the new Diggy Hole vinyl and was wondering if we could ever get a vinyl release of all of the Yogg's songs. Hashtag, thick Lydia for life. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Thanks, Pablo. <laughs> uh, a vinyl, vinyl. I think it'd be quite niche. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> I, wanna s I, I didn't know there was a Diggy Hole vinyl. Uh, well, isn't it the rock those the rock cover of it oh the one from the, vinyl, the, the yeah, cool guys yeah. oh wow yeah, that imagine would be really anyway cool. i don't think i don't know vinyls are cool but i don't know i feel like they're more like collectible than like i think they're things that you'd buy like i was worried that people were gonna buy the bodega book just to kind of have it on their coffee table or on their shelf yeah like um like just as a thing rather item. than actually reading that's what yeah. period was worried about we yeah. talked about it it's like i hope people actually do read it, read it. <laughs> <laughs> rather than just buy it to support the podcast kind of thing. But but, but like copies. vinyls are very much a thing where people buy them and never and don't I have vinyls there, which like. I don't listen to. I just bought them because I wanted the like special edition. Yeah. Um the next donor I think is more for you. So Eagle Eye twenty seven one four three. Hey Lewis. Uh, it's a two hundred and forty nine dollar donation. Massive donation. Oh my gosh, what? Eagle Eye, thank you so very, very much. My goodness me. That is incredibly generous. Thank you. Um you get some claps in the chat. Claps in the chat. Thank, thank you. you very much, Eagle Eye. Uh hey Lewis. 
I uh, only just heard about everything and wanted to say thanks to you and all the yogs for being there. I have watched you guys since I was 11 and I'm now 21. Uh, you guys have helped me through some very tough times. All love you. Um, thank you so much. Aww, Eagle thank Eye. you so much, thank Eagle Eye. I appreciate it. That is, that is paying for our stream. This is a thank sponsored you so stream. Much. You don't have to donate if you don't want. Um, we, we, can, we can, and also, you know, this is very kind of you to support me and Lydia. Thank because you. me and Lydia do these streams every, we're going to be doing them every Thursday now. Every Thursday morning. We've got a lo long list of games that we want to play. Yeah. And it just I'm, getting longer. I'm really enjoying it's just speculating about crime. I love. I, this is perfect for this because you we, you can't just do a t bunch of like stupid theories and things. Taxi drivers are just like really interesting characters who are, are famously very knowledgeable. Yeah. Because they talk to a lot of people. They hear a lot. They're of always music. chatting. They're listening to the yeah. radio. Often not music as well. Often like talk radio and stuff. And so they've always had this reputation. And also back in London, cabbies used to have to learn. The entire yeah, it was part of the sort of before GPS test, and stuff. Wasn't it? You had to like basically memorize every street in London and, and the quickest it was. route to get to places off by heart. It was actually a famously hard test. Yeah, they still do apparently. Really, even though um, even man though explaining GPS. taxis says Nalzi. Is that a is that an emo of a limmy? Is that a limmy emo? It looks like a limmy. Yeah, it is. Oh my god, I've. Limmy's still streaming, I think, a bit. Nalsi just follows Limmy. Anyway. Um man, I love I love a bit of I love a bit of taxi stuff. I used to because I used to get um I used to live it out in a, in a little village and I have a we used to have, basically I had like subsidized travel to get to school because I lived so far out in the sticks. Oh wow. And it took like an hour to get to school, but I had to get a taxi to a local village and then get a bus from there. To get so to I had school. Like a, I had like Damn. a fifteen minute taxi ride every morning. And it was always like really a, a taxi ride every morning. Yeah. Wow! How old were you? Uh, like, um, well, between eleven and like fifteen. So sec secondary school. Yeah. Oh wow, that's pretty intense. Did you like make friends with the taxi drivers? You yeah, they mates? were all like weird, different characters. Yeah. Did you tell them what all the murders you were doing, and they were listening like, hmm. They were like, yeah. <laughs> Piecing it together with their crazy wall at home. About how Lewis, I was mark, going to the mark. opera, <laughs> and how like I was, uh, they would cut me off last <laughs> week, and I'd hunt, hunted them down. <laughs> oh, that's a bit weird. Isn't it? Oh my god! Oh, that's pretty cool that you did a taxi ride every, every day. Yeah, it's a bit. It was a bit weird. Yeah. Um, John McCleary, yeah, I had to get taxi to school because my house was on a 60 miles an hour road. Yikes. Christ. Yeah. They weren't allowed to play football in that road, I guess. No, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, I wonder how many taxi drivers have, like, overheard something that has made them go, like, we think, do I go to the police with that? Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, but like they have It's like people discussing stuff. Yeah. Maybe it's just, like, overhearing something. Like, maybe it's, like, me and you, like, in a taxi being, like... So, oh, yeah, we killed that guy. <laughs> and we pushed it. We got him in the canal. <laughs> but what are we going to do about our bodies that are in the fridge still well, back there? Well, you know what I mean? And yeah, and it would be something completely innocent. Yeah. But uh, if you miss here. I do that all the time. Like, um, in, like, when we're out in the street, I'm talking about a game, a game or something. Well, we were walking along talking about growing weed. And it was that, um, oh, that, shit. that weed growing simulator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, like, Mishearing that would just be like. Imagine if you like just <laughs> caught a clip of that conversation. <laughs> I like that. I like hearing. I like listening to people's conversations. Me too. I love. Street. I love like people watching and like conversation just eavesdropping. It's really fun. It's really fascinating. And that's a big part of Paris actually. Like people watching is like when I was looking when we we and um, Sips and Tom and that went to Paris mm. for the um, recherche stuff. Um, we were like looking at these tourist spots and a lot of people places were saying oh this is great for people watching as if it was like yeah, an actual like hobby it's a sport almost, where people like. actually went and just sat around like nosily you have a it cup of coffee like kind of and you just watch people don't you but you like yeah i don't i did i it didn't it felt like very judgmental though because you're making well, you a lot of assumptions do, about you? someone like look at that guy in that hawaiian that big fat guy in a hawaiian <laughs> shirt he must be an American tourist <laughs> with his bum bag, his camera. <laughs> his fanny pack. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I when I do, I tend to like just, I like really looking at people, what people are wearing, like what clothes people wear and stuff like that. And like looking at different bodies. Like, so when we were in um, 
Vegas, we were at a pool party. I just found it fascinating just watching people go past and looking at like different body shapes and different like hairstyles and just how everyone is so different. I, like, it's just really interesting sitting, just watching, look like some literally people kind like of leering at people. Really but thick and stretched some out. Some people are thick, just, you know, just they thick. They, especially if they stood on the <laughs> edge of like a, of a camera, you know, that's got a wide lens. Yeah. Makes them Didn't like they extra thick. Weirdly extra um, thick. I'd just like to say that wasn't perving on people. I was just, I just find it interesting. No, but it does feel pervy. It kind of does. I, 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 I'm, I'm uncomfortable looking at someone <laughs> at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I like, am I, I always like, do I have permission to like <laughs> look, <laughs> to at, look you? at you? Do you see I mean? It feels like vaguely pervy. <laughs> Lydia admitting to perving. The dog's not catch a break. <laughs> Mr. Dangus. What are we going to do? It's people watching, not perving. <laughs> By the pool. Creatively bankrupt. <laughs> if you, if that's a, if donating to our stream is oh, the way wow. to go creatively yeah. bankrupt. Thank you. He says, I can't watch the stream because it's work, but I'm looking forward to watching the VOD later. I'm sure it's great as always. You guys are the best. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Creatively Bankrupt. Thank, thank you. you. That's super uh, kind of you. The Lettuce Man, 13. Love you, Lewis. You are the best. Lydia is pretty awesome too. Yes. Yog P2. Thank you so much, Lettuce Man. Nalsi says, I'd like to publicly distance myself from <laughs> Lydia Macarez. Most people do. <laughs> Sydney says, Lewis does not have permission to look at me. <laughs> um, uh, oh, wow. It's another thanks, another big dono, uh, dono as well. Another big one. Oh, my God. Stop donating. Uh, <laughs> Lava Horse. Of course, the yesterday's... Um, have you made an account called Lava Horse 420 after my... Oh Pokemon. shit! Yes. So, did you watch the video yesterday of uh, the old vlog? Did it? It was good. Um, I, of course, I did. I saw. But the well, so the, the story really is that I, for some reason I, I just fell in love with the horse, and then got halfway through and realised it was just a pony, and it was so cute. And it's like and, what old grannies have. And on I didn't want to. I didn't want to be like a brony, so I started painting it all like fiery. But then. Lydia was like, that looks like Rapidash. <laughs> it looks like, it looks a, looks Pokemon. like a Pokemon. Pokemon. <laughs> that obviously got cut out of the video for some reason. <laughs> yeah, I know. And so then I had to just try and, at the last, at the very last minute, try and make it into like a racing horse. <laughs> but the only way I could possibly do that was adding a racing stripe. A racing stripe, stripe and 420. And a number. <laughs> <laughs> He's I beautiful. Thinking, like, I basically ruined a perfectly good horse. <laughs> what does a horse look like? <laughs> um, it was very wholesome, actually. It was really nice. I really enjoyed doing that. That was really good wholesome. Your blog, done pottery painting. Before. Um, yeah, um, I, I, it was a good, good idea. Mike, Mike's idea. Mike was very keen. He was like, "Oh, that was one of my best ideas." Yeah, he was. He was really <laughs> he was like, with it. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, "This has worked out really well." Um, um, yes, thank uh, yeah, you, Lava Horse. A hundred dollar dono. Thank you so very much. My goodness me. Uh, he says, "Loving this stream, especially you guys have got me through a lot of exam periods and coursework deadlines." Aww. Love to you all. Thank you so much, thank Lava much. Horse. Thank you. Uh, Looty eighty oh says, "Lewis, I was the Sainsbury's boy. Please notice me." Really? Get, get out. Ooh. Sainsbury's boy. I s How tall are you? This is the real question. He's if you are yeah, real if Sainsbury's you are, boy. If you are Lutey 80, the real Sainsbury's boy, um, I said I at the know. start. You said at the start, you're, you're well, uh, he's six I'm foot eight. I'm Sainsbury's boy too. Six foot eight and a half. That's the thing. The half Ooh. matters. Did he say a half in real when life? When you're measuring anything in inches, did you? <laughs> Every, Every half, half counts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to measure in quarters if I could, <laughs> quite honestly. Um, I need, oh need all, the, all the help I can get. <laughs> Mind you, little boy. Did he say and a half in real life to you? Is that a good way of testing that that's actually him? I think so. Okay, there Gil we go. Glibman Hello, says, but what happens to the teapot? That's right. So Lid, um, so so Nina, uh, Nina was teapot. working on a teapot and yeah. cup and saucer, but the cup and saucer took so long that she oh, didn't have time yeah, to get it started on the teapot. Her beautiful Thanos. Um, but that that'll be for next time. You know, you got you got to save something for next time. Yeah. Slowly build an entire Avengers tea set. <laughs> That would be pretty cool. That would be really cool. You can't, you can't they bring came copyright out so though. nice. They did. The, so yeah, the, the place is so called Flying Saucers. Nice. You can go there if you're in Bristol. Yeah. I recommend it's it. It's full of kids, but actually, it's really wholesome. In yeah, there. we went chill. upstairs where, they, like, where there were no kids, and it was quite nice, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was quite chill. Yeah. Um, Sassy Pablo says, Look here, Lulu. You made a bloody jug, and people bought it so fast, it wasn't <laughs> even funny. I need a rubber tree vinyl. <laughs> How else can I flex my worth to other people with wobbly discs of shellac? 
Lydia, a small update on my three-legged cat. She's doing fine. Oh, she's good. Okay, that's that's good news. Uh, the lettuce, the little tripod. The lettuce man also says, Thank not sure why you're worried about being a brony when sunshine of Isra Pony exists. <laughs> we did that right at the start of brony things coming out. Yeah. And we weren't... Jumped on that. We were way. not necessarily aware of how weird it was. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm not really comfortable <laughs> with brony, no? bronyism anymore. I see that being like a really big part of really? your life. Yeah. yeah. Oh, have you saw, saw my collection? Yeah, actually. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> I've added Lava Horse 420 uh, to it. Oh, no, I've got it. Um, oh, God. The, the vinyl of Rubber Tree, do we really want that? Does anyone need that? Um, mm. I feel like Rubber Tree is one of the few songs that hasn't been, we haven't been massively sued for on copyright. No. I think we've lost more money from our songs than we've gained. Really? Yeah, oh, God. Over, <laughs> over the years. Because some of them, have, like the, the, the couple of them we got sued over, we've had to pay out so much. Oh, shit. No way. We're about level just broke even now yeah. oh fuck but oh, you know no, that's that what it's about yeah. breaking even it's all about just trying to stay afloat <laughs> well that's just I'm, as long as you don't lose money you know yeah um, how many people in chat have three legged cats we've got know. a three legged cat as well doesn't milkman we? yeah milkman was bad the bad one YMCA very litigious I saw they did because I was watching the US office oh yeah I've been watching it all of it again because it's really good um, and they were doing, there was a bit with YMCA, and I was like, oh, I hope they didn't get, I hope <laughs> so they got they permission for that. Right as well. <laughs> very dangerous. <laughs> very that. expensive paying for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, if you right. if you own any of those songs, yeah, you do, they are rare. If you want to put them on vinyl, go for it. Do do whatever you want. Honestly, with all of our stuff, you can just, just go for just, it. Just do whatever or you just want. Or just burn it. Yeah. Just burn it. Um, but the vinyl of that, that metal band doing Diggy Hole, that is mm, spicy. Mm. Covers of songs are not protected by fair use because they have to be a legitimate parody. Oh, it has to be taking the piss out of it. It has to take it. the piss. Right. It can't just it can't be, be copying. a cover. Right. Otherwise, it's a, a covers are not covered under fair use. Right. And if you're just doing like, if you're using the same tune and not mocking the original, right. it doesn't count. Oh, really? So you have to actually actively... It has to be changing the words, taking the piss out of it. It doesn't have to be funny. It just has to... Or good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, it just has to be a joke. It's good. You're getting um, sued. Even if it's not funny to anyone, you yeah. have to say, oh, I made it. It's stupid. I know. But there's a lot of stuff like that. Um, and also, a lot of the times, people give you permission to do something, and then their record company are like, nope. It all goes against it. So it like, just gets automatically flagged. Like with Lady it? Gaga, I think she was like, she actually saw one of Martin's like form this way or whatever back in the day. Oh, what? And was like, this is okay. Really? Cool, or this is cool or whatever. But what? I think her record company was like, no. No, this isn't cool. And it's the same thing with like some of Sparkles in Area 11. Like Sparkles is obviously cool with us using his stuff. Yeah. But um, the company, the record company that own his stuff have are copyright claiming it like really? actively. Really? I want. So every every like few months we have to get Minecraft Christmas unclaimed again or whatever. Oh, shit. But it's just kind of, it's just madness. And the... It's just yeah. it's just the, the the corporations who are doing it automatically. They just upload these catalogs and just say auto claim all this stuff because they can just rake a whole load of money in from yeah, YouTube. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. If you're a record company and you've got a thousand, hundred thousand songs, upload them all to the copyright claim system and just blanket claim everything. Everything. And they just rake in the money. So you the get small, all the advertising. The small trickles, yeah. Um, money that they make from their videos yeah. because your songs in it. Is that how it was? No. Yeah. Well, the other way around. They other get, they yeah. Get all the yeah. That's what. No. That's what I meant. I meant you uh, being the corporate. People, yeah. 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 Not you it's clever. It's happened for years, years, years. Yeah. It's um, a good way to make a living. I'm looking like Tom, the t-shirt and the jacket. It looks exactly like Tom. My God. Nourish is becoming more radical by the minute. Bring the guillotine. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a bit, bit later than the guillotine era. Um, all right. We're gonna have a quick cup of tea yeah. and coffee. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're gonna you be guys. back in like and gals five minutes. Yes with more stories let's solve and we'll see how far we get yeah let's, let's um, try I'm solve enjoying one it. I'd like to solve one if we don't solve it this week we'll be back next week and we'll solve it then yeah we've got to, we've got to solve something um, and you guys are going to help us yeah alright stay tuned check out the link to this in chat if you're interested in pick it up uh, support the devs yeah thank you see ya someone will post a link
Hello. Oh, Hello. Where's my pipe? I forgot. Did my you leave it in the toilet? Pipe. I'm smoking it outside. Oh, oh Christ! Bloody left it in Plastic the bathroom. Lewis. Left it on the on the top of the top of the old the old old uh, what's it called? You can the, do it. The Get it out. Welcome back. Come on. <laughs> To our stream. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. I made a cup of tea. This tea has little messages on the tea bags Ooh, whenever yeah. you make it. Mm -hmm. And this one says, you make me. You make me. I make the tea. Do you get it? Oh. <laughs> you make me. So I was just having a moment there. Yeah. You make me. Yeah. Can I see it? Look. So it has like little words of wisdom. Sometimes As in, like you make you make me, you make me. Yeah. So sometimes oh. it's like, sometimes it's like, oh. have a nice cup of tea and a rest. You know. You complete me. Have a, yeah. Add some milk <laughs> to me. Please make me milky. Put, <laughs> put milk in me. Uh, so you make me. That's really, that's the most meaningful interaction you're going to have today. This I like having a discussion with my cup Your of tea. Your tea. Sometimes I don't like to be around people <laughs> you know just like to be sometimes around i just want to be a talking cup of tea i just want a talking cup of tea <laughs> 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 uh we're oh. playing night call this is out on steam mm -hmm. um it came out yesterday and it is a mystery wrapped in an enigma mm -hmm. in a paris taxi cab i'm really enjoying it so far stream. it's very unique it has got a great look to it. Yeah. Um, the next passenger in your cab is a surprising, calming presence. He gently closes his door. Like a, like a, he's a cup of tea in human form. Is he a priest? Oh, maybe. Is that a... Um... Yeah. He gives you an address. You sense your partner wants to talk about the killer. Wow. It's simple. This is the first murder everyone thinks they know something. Everyone thinks they saw something. And this passenger is no exception. Okay. Do you want to do his voice or okay. shall I? I'm going to make him Irish. It's rather chilly out, isn't it? His voice is warm and collar. Warm and collar. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs I, those other I words? <laughs> <laughs> Just skip them. <laughs> You're not too cold. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, oh, hang on. I'm finished. We do what we can to stay warm. Yeah. I've got a lot of grit to want to drive in this kind of weather. The holy water font froze yesterday. <laughs> we had to pour a boiling water over to break the ice. He pauses for a moment. He windows. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I've never made this connection before today, but a taxi is kind of like a confessional. Oh my god, it really yeah. is! A small box removed from the world where two people can converse without the risk of being interrupted. But also, often a stranger. Yeah, a stranger. Especially in a big city. Yeah, exactly. He waits. You look at him in the rearview mirror. Do people blabber on about their lives? Uh, uh. <laughs> His face <laughs> lights up. Why, well, yes, I'm doing exactly what my parishioners do when they come for a confession. They start with small talk, the weather, their grandson, granddaughter, niece, their dog. Then they finally get around to what really matters. They share lies, trickery, stinginess. <sighs> I've been listening to people's confessions for over 15 years and it's funny, but no one has ever told me anything really serious. It's just that the people I hear in confession have so much to say. Of course, we all have things we are ashamed of. Freud, uh, Freud clearly understood. Freud. Fro Freud, sorry. Freud clearly understood the importance of the confession booth. Did he? He made it into something more modern, more attractive, and less pu punitive. Hmm. Before going to s seminary, I never doubted my calling, my calling. But since. Since then, I have a clearer understanding of the world. I can connect religions, schools of thought, ideas. Right. Have you heard the good news? <laughs> have you heard the good news, Father? <laughs> and living in a country that is less and less religious, it's hard not to start wondering. Yeah. I have something I want to tell you. It doesn't bother me that people stop believing or believe in something else. This accent is all over the show. Why, are, why our faith more than another? He struggles to find his words. What bothers me is that I'm not bothered by it. 
It's like I've already accepted it. He looks outside. Is there such a thing as driver passenger confidentiality? Ha 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 I'm kidding. But I do wonder what people talk to you about. How would you feel about swapping stories? Sure. Well, this chat. Yeah, yes. definitely. I think we should. Do you want to swap stories with this guy? He sounds like he's... This is like I a, think we should like a do it. This is like one of those pacts, though, right? Sure, to be sure. Yes. It's to be sure. To be sure. Oh, really? It's definitely yes. Oh, I didn't yeah. think. I didn't think. <laughs> Nothing leaves this car, right? This is like one of those two criminal things where you, I agree to kill... <laughs> Your oh, husband. and I agree to kill your wife. My husband. Your husband. <laughs> <laughs> we both kill each other's husbands. Yes. And then... But then I bla I can blackmail you. Because she wouldn't have any motive yeah. to kill my husband. Yeah, well, it's like Strangers on a Train. Yeah. But then Strangers it, on a Train. But then it goes all fucked up. Monka S, thank you. Nazi got it straight away. Yeah. It's, it's a really good one. Works every time. It works every time. So far, it's never failed me. <laughs> <laughs> to contrary, like four husbands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, not in these this car, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's, uh, Irish is woo. <laughs> Who first? Uh, Should we gain his trust by saying us first? Let's say, let's say, uh, let's say him. Go. Yeah. Of course, it's only normal. There was this old man whose wife died very young. Since she was an avid churchgoer, he continued to come every Sunday morning. And. Mm. You should know that it's rare to see men alone at the church. Really? Mm, there are couples, lots of old ladies, mothers, young women. The church is not very manly, unfortunately. But anyway, he came. Don't know what that happened there. One day, he asked me to take his confession. We sat down, a long moment of silence went by. I usually let them get acclimatized, acclimated, acclimated, father. <laughs> Acclimate. Do you want a cup of tea, Father? Cup of tea. I will, I will, I will. A cup of tea. A cup of tea. Oh, I will. <laughs> I will, I will. Oh, I will, Father. To the muffled sounds coming from outside the booth, especially if it's their first time. Ooh. And there he tells me that he's in love with someone, but he doesn't dare betray his deceased wife. Blimey. She was everything to him, you see. His son is oxygen. For the last 20 years, he's been suffocating, incapable of living alone. He wondered if it was a sin or wrong if he might upset his wife up in heaven. Hmm. I managed to find the, uh, the right words, but he still wasn't sure and he said he'd come back to talk to me again. He died that night in his sleep. Good Lord. Good Lord, that took a turn for the worst. I think of him often. We don't always hear our calling. We avoid our own destiny. Uh, your turn. Blimey, Father. What the hell? Well, my story is a <laughs> like yours, actually. It's a story that haunts me. Not only because of everything that has followed. The night of the terrorist attacks, the other drivers and I were helping get people home. We drove around. Oh, the terrorist attacks, fuck, yeah. We waved to people trying to get in. We t tell them they know it's okay. And that everything was going to be alright. It was chaos. They all wanted to get home to their loved ones who weren't answering their phones. The slightest odd noise made them jump. Anyway, a woman and her husband got into the car. She wore a headscarf. He was glued to his phone. They gave me an address and we drove towards Rue de Rivoli. The radio was announcing the first estimations of the number of deaths. He started crying. She looked at me. Uh, she stared at me in the rearview mirror like she wanted to read my mind. We'd almost arrived when he told her to take her scarf off, that it would be easier for everyone that way. She refused. He raised his voice. She continued to stare at me in the mirror. How reckless. The car zoomed past and cut, cut a line. And what did you do? I nodded, insinuating that she was right. But it would all come down to that. She kept her headscarf on. I pulled over in front of the building. She got out first, walked towards the building without waiting for him. He paid me, lowered his eyes. Impressive. 
impressive. Very impressive. You're saying we should remain proud of and faithful of our convictions. Yeah. Mm, that smiles false, though. Thank you for swapping stories with me. You're very welcome, Father. <laughs> Go in peace. Good luck. That's it. Those interactions, like, you know, mm. there's no chance to make friends. No, you just, and then you'll never see them again. Yeah. Unless you get the bus, the taxi to school every day. Yes. And then I they suppose. become your best mate. Yeah. Just 29 euros in a receipt. It's expensive tax truck. Right. Crikey, look how many people there are. There's so many people. I don't know if I've got enough accents for this. <laughs> Who's left? I could do Australian. <laughs> Is the next person going to be Australia? And that's even worse than the Irish. I think we should head up towards... Um, the display. eye, yeah. yeah. What's our fuel like? We're all right. It just depends where they want to go. Do any of them have a destination which is near that eye? I think this guy looks a bit... A bit of a... bit of a interesting guy. Oh, but he's oh. going all the way up there. No nah, way. That'll be good. Oh, but they were miles away. Airport, though. Then we can get someone from the airport. We come back towards the eye. Yeah. It is half three in the morning, though. The night will be over soon. Do you reckon he's just like a Japanese tourist? Maybe. Well, yeah. He's not going to know much about how... He's not going to know much about his, his, no. his events, is he, though? No, I disagree with doing this, Lewis. You didn't consult me. I'm sorry, Lydia. I made a mistake. <laughs> wow, we've picked up a huge, heavy suitcase. Just saying right now that I'm not doing... Doing an airport run. Oh, my gosh. Well... Charles de Gaulle, right? It's still pretty early to be getting on the plane. He must be the type that likes to get there well ahead of time. Japanese, Chinese? I'm not sure. Tourists always have such a magical image of Paris. There's almost no traffic and you're able to drive at a decent speed. Behind you in the rear view mirror, you can see the tip of the Eiffel Tower start to appear. How do we talk to him? Do we, do we, do we say... I don't we, think you'd say Eiffel Tower. Maybe we, look who's... Eiffel like Tower! <laughs> 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 Maybe the jolly intro is like a way to break the ice. Yeah. He looks pretty grumpy. He's got his arms folded. Everyone likes the Eiffel Tower, right? Oh. Oh, shit. Okay, he's Japanese. And I can't read kanji. Have you heard the good news? <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Oh no, it's totally to believe he thinks it's ugly. Oh no. Shall we try to say something in English instead? Maybe he speaks English instead of French. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. I forgot that we're technically talking in French, aren't we? Okay, yeah. say something in English. A few words you know in English get you nowhere with your passenger. Uh-oh. Oh Christ. His voice is frank with a dose of exhaustion. Well done on picking this passenger up, Lewis. Can't even bloody communicate with him. <laughs> Should have realised. It's Japanese. Okay. Does anyone read Japanese kanji? Can anyone read what this guy's saying? Is anyone following? Call Leo. Does Leo? Leo doesn't speak enough Japanese to figure this stuff out. He's think. kettle trying. Does she? Maybe she does. She's been having lessons. Yeah. Kanji is hard though. That's real hard. I think I just saw airport. Saying pee pee poo poo. Someone said airport. He imitates the sound of a plane taking off. Like, what's the sound of a plane taking off? I hate <laughs> France. <laughs> so we're still in Japan. I think you may have recognised the, the name, name of the airport. airport. I think we should just let him. I mean, we can't talk to him. Unless no. he's pretending not to be able to talk to us. Oh, that would be such a good way of getting out of a conversation you don't want. Just like... Airport? I mean, I, I just... You want something to eat? Stand. Sorry. I don't want to... It's even heavy. Do we need to pull over to pick him up a sandwich? Oh my god, he's just... I can. We can talk to the cat. How is this even helpful? We, we, we can talk to the cat, <laughs> but... But like, yeah, it's this hard is... hard to talk to this guy. Oh, he's really... He's probably telling us all about the murderer who did the killing. <laughs> Probably laying it out just plain and simple. Let's just say nothing. God, he's just. 
His list of all the things he hated. So he didn't like Paris. Yikes. I saw restaurant. Okay, maybe he didn't like the food. Something about Osaka. Oh my god! <laughs> this is amazing! <laughs> Look how slow the progress we're making is as well on the screen, like the map. Versailles? Versailles? Yes! You go to the palace. Hi! Versailles? Versailles? <laughs> no! Fucking what? <laughs> this must happen a lot as well. Someone you get a cat, run. you get a yeah. driver who. Get a. Get a Get a Pass page like a who cannot speak. Can't speak a word of their language. Yeah, that must happen loads. It's happened to me a couple of times in other places too. Like in when I was in Japan or when I was in Italy, we got a cab driver who spoke no English, not a word, yeah. or at least refused to even like acknowledge mm. any English that was said to him. You he used know. to do charades to like um, work out where he wanted to go. He wants you he to repeat Paris. what he's saying. I'll repeat it. But I can't read. I don't even know what sounds I would need to make for that. He's asking us to repeat after him. For just a second, you imagine yourself as a taxi driver in Tokyo. Businessmen. Well dressed high schoolers, Japanese mobsters, oh, Yakuza. Yakuza. I don't think we want to ask him about no. the Yakuza. Are you in the Yakuza? Apparently, he's saying that Paris is very ugly. Really? You think about the movie you saw during your hospital stay. Black American soldier on the run who starts hanging out with some sort of bum who was a huge jazz fan. It's a singular movie. Incredible. It made a real impression on you. The title was. Oh, I can't remember. How do we possibly describe that to the Japanese guy? Do you know what? I don't think you have to. I think sometimes people just want to hear noise. You know? Like you can just talk and don't not say anything. Yeah. And it's soothing. Wait, you could just talk but not say anything? Well, imagine you were in a cab drive yeah. and, you, and there was a guy in Italian just talking away in, in Italian. Yeah. To you. Yeah. Or to himself. Yeah. Actually, that would be pretty soothing. I quite like listening to other languages. Even though you don't know a word they're yeah. saying, it's like that human... There's an element of that, that that bleeds through, right? Like, a lot of the time, it's not the same, but in music, you don't often really listen mm. to the lyrics. You know, no one actually listens to the poetry, you know? I, I think I could listen to a French or someone who can speak French, talk. But I just I just love the French language and the French accent. I think it's so pretty and like soothing and like kind of sexy. I feel like I could just listen to it all the time. I wouldn't, they could be telling me that my mother is a poor and you know, I look thick and I'd just be like, mm, mm, yes, go on. There we go, he's just blessing us now. Okay. Thank you, Shinji. Your mother is a hamster. Oh, do go on. Tell me more. <laughs> I love the music in this. Like, it's really simple, but very atmospheric. Um, me too. It's probably like, <laughs> what? What did he say? I bet he's probably talking... What is this man saying? Oh. Maybe he lost someone he here. He says he'll come again. He was talking about regretting doing something. Well, I mean, it could be anything. His like, eyes are misty. His story could be anything. It's sad. I mean, all we know is that he's a sad man with a big suitcase. Maybe, maybe, maybe he, his partner or his wife was here. He didn't, and he didn't like Paris, but there seems to be the resounding. And maybe she was killed in the terrorist attack or something, and he's... Do you know what I mean? Maybe, maybe... Well, look, he could be anyone, couldn't he? 
He could he could be visiting for any reason. He yeah. certainly didn't look like a tourist. He didn't look like he was here for business. You know, yeah, I, I think it, there's, he he's had some sort of relationship. So, so okay, so Joel says someone died. He wanted to go to Paris and he feels sad that it didn't work out. Is that true? He said he had a tiny dick. <laughs> I mean, I guess I can just believe what anyone's saying going, yes, yes. Well, we've got Santa. <gasps> oh my God, it's Santa. A silhouette of a lady. Um, Perian Flax. <laughs> Keanu Reeves. Me. <laughs> oh wait, let's do the eye. Oh. Let's do the eye. <laughs> the eye. Oh, yeah. the um. Yeah. Do you want to do that? Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll go to the point of the point of interest. There's a lot of stories around here, though. Mm -hmm. There's there's Kim. Um, dead body. You but park Santa. A, park a few streets away from the Argent. Argentinian embassy and wait there with Ooh. your contact. Sigh. Seems so odd to have a contact. The guy's one of your regulars, poker buddies. A night watchman at the embassy. Get out of your taxi and walk towards the big metal gate. Green lights. Early 20th century. Maybe. Lots of raw iron. The gate opens and someone moves toward you. They indicate you should follow them. Person's face is hidden by an oversized hoodie. Your heart starts beating faster. What if it was? <gasps> follow. What do you think we should follow? Yeah, we'll just follow him. Don't worry. This is not how we die. It's the not today. You walk into a narrow, covered passageway, probably the entrance to a parking garage. The man turns around and lights up a cigarette. We are in Paris, after all. Mm -hmm. The lighter lights up his face for a second. A young man with curly hair, pale skin, young, very young. That'll be 250 euros. <laughs> He's gonna talk like a nerd. What do we wanna do? Do we wanna like... For, uh, I think ask, like for the intel? Like let's find out what the fuck we're paying for. Yeah. Yeah, for the intel. <laughs> what do you think this was? A date? You want information on Goros Deesher? I got info on Goros Deesher, and it'll cost you 250 euros, so what'll it be? I, 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 I don't know how much money we have. Let's bargain. <clears throat> His accent becomes stronger. Even more nerdy. Uh, uh, no, it's 250 euros or nothing. If Who someone is... learns I fished around, they'll fire me on the spot. Yeah, we've got like over 300, I think, hey. Professor Frank. <laughs> okay. Listen up, because I'm not going to say it twice. Goros Disher is definitely a colonel from the... From the Junta, one of the few who wasn't arrested and put on trial. So the medical person came from Argentina. Oh, really? Do you remember? Ooh. He is responsible for torturing dozens of political opponents. He tortured and killed them. You know, we don't like him much here, but the rich Argentinians in Paris love him. They really respect him. Respect him. So he's dead. Yeah, if it makes you happy. One last thing. I read in the newspaper that the killer wrote a message in chalk. Time's up. There was a slogan at the end of the Janta. A sort of watchword from the opponents. It was time for them to go. You get it? Okay. Is it, um, okay. Wait, how do you. Is it yon, Yonta? Janta. Honta. Honta? Honta? Sorry. I would have said military junta. Yeah, my bad. Is it hunter? Hunter. Hunter. I had no idea. Hunter. Thanks, guys. So, we found out how ah. Elf got his scar. Is that the homeless guy? We've met the one and the son. Sylvain and Sylvie. We listened to Sylvie. We did. Um. We met Jean Noel. Drunk guy? 
Yeah, who was on a date with a teacher. Yeah. Who met angry Luke woman. Ian, who was angry with us for fucking cutting her off and ruining her almost life. ruining her life. But uh, back. we worked it out, didn't yeah. we? She actually ended up okay. That's good. We lost some money because we spent a lot of money. Yeah. That's all. Oh, he really met a Irish priest. Yeah, he was a nice guy. Um, we did confess. We told him about a little thing that happened. Uh, Shared a story. Shinji, which was a... We know. met Shinji. Dude, we didn't really... Didn't really follow what he had to say. No, before, but he was sad. Something was bothering him. I don't know what. Okay, um, so we've got an envelope now. Thick and heavy, you can just make out your real, real name. name. Uh oh. Deep breath and go inside. In the envelope, you find more information. Okay, what we got? Okay. Oh, someone's outside the door. I reckon that was Boussey outside the door. Picture of crime scene four. That's like a bullet casing. Spent bullet case. Yeah. So what did they say? The time is running. Time is up. Was something to do with Argentine? Yeah. Hunter. Victim three was a colonel of the Hunter. He was known to have tortured prisoners. Right. That's why he was like, they respect him, and then he was he like, they respected him from Argentina in the eighties. Time is up. So crime scene three looks like it's very clear yeah. that it was this Argentinian character. But Claudia Campos, obviously she did lose her parents to the Argentinian junta in yeah. the process. So do you reckon that victim three... Time is up was a slogan for the opposition to the hunter. Yeah. And maybe it means two things, though. Do you see what I mean? It's like a slogan for the opposition to the hunter, but also that his time is finally up, mm. that he's finally paid his price. Like almost like one of these Nazis hiding in the in the in Argentina, like that. But instead, it's it's an Argentinian who is a member of the military mm. government who uh, who who killed her parents or was involved in maybe torturing them. Yeah. Yeah. This is all linked to the same thing. This is a lot of stuff. I mean, rare gun used in the seventies. Maybe been his. Yeah, maybe been this. Been maybe it's this military guys, guy's gun. Military guy. Killer knew the victim was researched, and that leads us to this side as well. How do we? I mean, we we met this guy. He's the homeless guy. Oh, we haven't met any. Why does you deserve people. this link to him? I don't know. Maybe he's maybe maybe we know him. Oh, the second victim. Oh, I see. He worked for him. Works for Charles Bourgrain. Hmm. Okay. Let's look at the other documents we've got. Bourgrain, victim two. Okay, so this is that guy. Not enough time. Oh shit! Oh, too late. Right. We can't go through all of this stuff tonight. We should have come back home earlier. Yeah. Instead of talking to that Japanese guy and taking him on the longest route to the airport. What else? What did we learn about Charles? Victim Brain? two killed in only spot without CCTV. So someone had a knowledge of the CCTV locations in that area. I mean, if, if all three of the first crimes he's had chalk messages, that feels like it's the same person, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Knew the victims researched him. It's weird that this guy was... I mean, Click on the no files idea. with the middle mouse button for more info. I can't actually click these at all. Anymore. What about the ones up at the top? Use them. No, I tried doing that. No. no. I'll do that. I'll do that tomorrow night. With a heavy hand, you wipe your tired face. Oh, pull up on the sofa bed, which unfolds with an unpleasant creak. 
you collapse into the mat. You do need to get some sleep. The events of the day run through your head. The streets, the passengers, their faces, their problems. It's more like the night, wasn't it? You open one eye. Your back aches. You'd like to close your eyes and go back to sleep. You get up quickly. And a few minutes later, you're outside of your studio. Time for night three. Yeah, that's that's another thing, isn't it? You know, that's a familiar, a familiar thing. Oh my God, well, there's loads of like places of, of interest? interest now. Also, uh, Doctor Darkheart says Claudia is a medical examiner, so she would know how to clearly commit a crime and get away with it as well. Ooh. Yeah, but with a gun. Yeah, where would she got that gun? From outside the Montparnasse gun store. Ooh, okay. Any shop. Inside, they sell handguns, machine guns, knives, even grenades. It's your first time here, but you've already had its owner in your cab. The store opens really early so the patrons can come and train at the shooting range. As you walk up the counter, you hear the distant noise of gunshots under your feet. Wow. Remember can that? I help you? <laughs> An elder woman with a hunched back. She's been selling weapons since the 70s. Cheeky in a typically Parisian way. In a typical Southern Bear way. <laughs> oh, it's you. It's been ages. Come closer. You make small talk and eventually decide to go for it. I have a question for you about the weapon. You slide this photo of the shell across the counter. Oh, so that's the photo we got. Oh, of the right. evidence. Where's that photo from? She's been doing this for years. It is from the cops. You tell the truth, really? A photographer friend? Or what, do you, what do you guys think? Tell the truth or lie? The, do I say the cops or do I know? She might shy her away there if we start talking about the cops. This isn't, this is like a... Lie, a, lie, a truth, be honest, truth. Truth, lie, lie, lie. I think there's more lies than there are truths. I took it. She's not going to believe No, it. I think a photographer friend. Yeah. Yeah, right. Get the fuck out of here. Oops. <laughs> Recoil the bitterness in her voice. Listen, I'm just looking for more information about this shell. I don't talk to filthy lies like you. Get out. She points to the door. Okay. Please. <laughs> yeah. Tell the truth. Yeah, and just how you end up with police photos. I'm a cop now. I'm helping them out. I feel like we just have to tell the truth. This, she knows. You know perfectly well this lady never smiles, but something on her face shifts ever so slightly into what might be construed as a small grin. I'm not surprised. You are always the type who want to help people out. She practically rips the photo out of your hands. Hmm. She thinks for a while. The shop doors open and a woman, probably a cop, comes in, greets the owner, and disappears downstairs. When she opens the door, it creaks, and the smell of gunpowder spreads throughout the shop. It's funny, this doesn't fit with what you told me. The shell is in perfect shape, and you told me the bullets are also completely clean. But it's old ammo, you can tell. There's are, there are no scratches, but there are a few oxidation, oxidation stains and... <laughs> oh no. The usual, yeah. Her voice grows darker. In my opinion, it's from an old weapon, perfectly maintained by someone who knew what they were doing. In light of what you told me, I say it belonged to a cop or a soldier. Mm, could be a family weapon. It was a police service weapon in the 1970s. Either a cop held onto it or the guy you're looking for inherited it. That judge, them, he's a pro. Mm, you raise your head to meet her gaze. Interesting. Or oh, she, actually. You know, lots of women shoot, and I give classes if you have any lady friends who are interested. Back in your cab. Hmm. You don't know how this woman knew that. Interesting. We've got a coupon for a class on shooting automatic weapons. Yikes. 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 I think we should go here and then refuel. Yeah, oh yeah, we are a bit low on fuel. Good idea. Let's do it. Let's pay for a bit of a, a refuel. This guy looks like every generic beard, glasses, 30, dark hair. 30 year yeah. old guy I've ever met. <laughs> Police archives. Okay, we're doing some digging around tonight. Yeah. Okay, this is where all the criminal records are stored. 
You had a place wait well for several months. You spent a lot of time with the woman who directs it. Ooh. Oh, she was a regular passenger calling upon you almost every night. First as a driver, and then you can see her shape. She's thick. Her thick, wide angle lens shape. You try to prevent your brain from going there, but it has Oof. a mind of its own. Oof. Lydia. My God. You're just being led across. Oh, Helen. Helen, I'm not going to lie. I was surprised by your request. She likes a cigarette. Oh. Are you don't smoke anymore? We gotta smoke. <laughs> that first waft of nicotine and gas with the lighter. Mm. Mm. It's like a first sip of a nice fresh brew. She runs her hand through her hair. Her wedding band shines into the street lamp. You're freezing. Listen, I'm sure you know I'm not allowed to give you this kind of information. But if what you said were true, then. Uh, She's reaching for our side. I want to touch you. <laughs> I'm going to let her do it. Oh, yes. Her hand brushes over your wound. You think about her body, her habits, how she used to call you in the middle of the night. <laughs> I fished around and uh, the first three victims were not part of the dead league. Shit. Shit, indeed. That means the information about Besson, Bourgogne and the Argentinian one. Gorodisha. Gorodisha. That's right. That, that's right, Gorodisha. It all came from someone who had access to their criminal records. That help? Yeah. It's better than nothing. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Helen. <laughs> Thank you, you Helen. You, uh, you should come over sometime. What do you think? I am thinking that uh, it was... Uh, when my husband is out on business. It was dangerous. You come to my house. What do you think, Chad? Well, I think we should. Do we sleep with a I married woman? Do it. Do we say it's a bad idea? Or do I we just uh, say some malefice? Uh, my husband... Uh, we don't uh, know. We don't know. I think you should. I have touched your side. My husband, he is never home. Sounds good. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> 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 Let me just finish. Oh, wait, that's you. All this. Yes, of course. Give me a call when all this is over. She looks deep into your eyes. You look down. Her hands are shaking. One last smile and she puts a cigarette. <laughs> Do this one. I've got to run. You do. Oui, oui. Au revoir. Au revoir. Marie. Also, you should stop smoking. It is bad for your health. <laughs> she says if she smokes. <laughs> right. Who was... <laughs> so we got something from about Gorodisha there again. That was weird. Uh, I swear it's, I was so in the character then that I kind of missed what she actually said. What was she... What what did, she, what did she say? What was the info? She was like, she basically said that there were like, I don't know. I I I, was, I wasn't really paying attention. We were so lost. That's in her eyes. There's more stuff here. Okay, there's a. Oh, which victim? I wonder. You leave a taxi behind and walk towards the last victim's building. Charles Bougrain Ferrer was killed in his parking garage. The large metal carriage door is firmly closed. So I think they were the names of the victims, right? That she said, like Besson, Bougrain, something, and Gor mm -hmm. Gor maybe that Goroloth guy was the fourth victim. <laughs> the large metal carriage door is firmly closed. Look for another entrance. I don't want to waste all our night just standing there. We're we'll at the back of the building and look around the various entrances: the main one, the garage door, and a maintenance door for the trash can. Maintenance entrance? Barely taking a step when a voice calls out to you. Concierge. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> this is private property. You turn around and see a rather elderly man, probably the concierge. He shines his flashlight in your direction. Uh, I'm a journalist! No, maybe not. <laughs> a journalist? 
Yes, I'm doing a story on the judge and his victims, including Mr. Bougrain Ferrer. Oh, he hesitates. I'm sorry, but I'm not at liberty to tell you anything. Uh, I just need the two minutes of your time. He nods nervously, or maybe in fright. You have trouble making his face, but you can see his eyes bug out. Go! And get out of here before I call the cops! You leave the lobby. The concierge follows you and checks to make sure the door is firmly shut behind you. If I see you looking around again, I'm calling the cops! Ah, we balls it up. Mm -hmm. My bad. He's furious, though. That was a bit weird, wasn't it? I think that was a bit weird. Mm, well, I guess probably as a concierge, it's his job to keep ruffians. Let's go and refuel. Yeah. Because we're right near it. I feel like it's not a huge, huge time sink to do that. Um, Le bon. Le bel bon. The beautiful pump. Beautiful pump. Beautiful pump. Hmm. Self service. Mini Mart sells newspapers. Oh, Ooh, we, we can ask the person who works there a question. Walk into the mini mart. Guy behind the counter doesn't even look at you when he starts to talk in a lazy, lifeless tone. Yep. Maybe the newspapers would be useful. They're, they're pretty cheap as well. Yeah. Four bucks. Talk to the clerk. It doesn't seem very interesting. Whoosh. This serial killer business is crazy. You seen how much the police suck at catching him? Mm. A clue. We got a clue. Mm. Well, that was worth it. Yeah. Have a good evening. Okay. Cool. So ya. Better do some work because you haven't picked anyone up. I know. God. Right, we've got a choice between chubby, spooky man and sad Asian girl. Uh, let's chat decide. Chat, who are we picking up? Girl chubby, or boy? chubby, spooky man or sad Asian girl. Uh, weird hair girl. She looks like the girl from The Ring. You didn't get any petrol. Oh. <laughs> Lol. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. Uh, I think the girl has won. Yeah, go. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, no, she's going to have gone now, isn't she? Fuck. Oh. She's oh, no, we can get this old lady. Okay, new choice. Old lady. <laughs> old lady. Sad girl from the girl. ring. Keanu Reeves. Boring looking beret guy or old... Washed up, grey-haired man. Oh, what we could do? Ring, sad old lady, old woman, old lady, old lady. Uh, sad Asian, sad Asian, ring girl, lady, Keanu. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a blend here. Find Santa. We need to find Santa. Yeah. Oh, hit by the migraine. Oh, we just got a headache. Yikes! I crack the window and icy Parisian air fills the cab. It's obviously oh, winter. Oh, we need to rest. We need coffee. You need to close your eyes. Just a minute. One tiny minute. You don't need to sleep. <gasps> you raise your head and see yourself. What? Your gut clenches. No. It's more like someone is pulling your guts out. Yes, I look like shit. I know. No surprise considering all the crap I eat, huh? Yeah. I've just got one thing to say. It won't take too long. You'll be able to get back to defending the weak and poor right after. Maybe cleaning up your reputation. It's that pretty face of yours. Every once in a while, I picture us on the night Dad died. You remember? Your tongue is burning. I remember. All that hate you had built up inside. It was incredible. Plus, all that hate was aimed at me. You threw it all in my hands. I wanted you dead. I wanted to poke your eyes out. But you only had eyes for mom and everybody else. So you could tell you weren't doing so well. That they didn't get it. 
Every time neighbors, friends came to the door to offer their condolences, they said they were sorry, that he was too young. He wanted to scream at them, tell them that they didn't understand anything. But you kept your mouth shut, didn't you? You're always the weaker of us too. See our brother? He was the devil incarnate. But he always practiced what he preached. Got this music. If you were him, you'd already have stopped the killer with your balls alone. <coughs> but no, you preferred to make a deal with the police. With every bastard in the city of Paris. You're gonna die alone, man. Because I'm telling you right now, I'm not gonna hang. It's only right if it's just a car, you're alone. Do we have like schizophrenia or something? Yikes, was that like a nightmare? Yeah, so our dad died and we like hated ourselves for it. And our brother was like... Split personality. Somehow yeah. like our brother was like the devil incarnate. Yeah. The actual, it was actually Satan, the red guy with the tail. Where's Satan's brother? The music's great, that like build up of like the violin or whatever that instrument is, is like really intense. We passed out on the way to getting a fair. And now our old lady's buggered off. You pull the newspaper out of the glove compartment and start leafing through it. Eventually something grabs your eye. It's a rather positive critique of a bar called Solilis. Solilis. You make note of the information with interest. Solilis. Uh oh. Keep reading, might as well. Or do you think? Let's not waste any more time reading. I feel like unless it's on the um, front page, mm. I'm not sure it's going to be that useful to us. Old lady. Oh, hello. <laughs> just getting ready. Just getting into character. Oh dear. It's taste of blood in your mouth. I need to talk to you. All right. The scent of orange blossom fills the air as your passenger enters the cab. You smile. She returns your smile. Good evening. There is an emotional warmth to her voice. You sense your passenger wants to talk about the killer. <gasps> okay. All right. Let's hear about it. It's pretty cold out tonight, isn't it? Yeah. You nod. There are passengers like this elderly woman who immediately take a liking to. I can almost feel the cold air setting in around the corners of my mouth. It's a funny feeling, but one that a nice cup of hot tea can quickly dispel. A smile plays across her lips. Or a cup of hot chocolate, of course. On nights like this, I can't go out on my own anymore. And yet I have to. Alright. Why do you have to go ahead? Let's just say I needed to talk to you. I hope you won't get me wrong, but... Just drive around the block, if you will. I know who you are and what you're doing. I admire what you're doing. The city really needs your help. So does the world. Don't take it the wrong way, but I know you're looking for the killer. I know what he did to you. I know why you're after him. Hmm. I'd like to make you an offer. You can either take it or leave it. I'd, I'd like everything I tell you to remain a secret, no matter what happens afterwards. What do you say? Emily listening. Emily listening. You see, when my husband died, he left me a building. I converted it, made repairs and renovations, but above all, I gave it a goal, a role, a reason to exist. This hotel, I suppose I could call it a shelter, but that would scare away the people who need it. Some say it is a retreat, but same thing, the word has unpleasant connotations. I keep calling it a hotel because my guests need to realize that they are only passing through. That their real life is out there waiting for them. Mm. Mm. There's more to this kind grandmother than meets the eye. A hint of greatness. Are you following me? Yeah. Uh, uh, we. Oui. We oui, met that. <laughs> Good. Uh, well, anyhow, the hotel is reserved for men, women and couples. For anyone who needs it, really. I use the word reserve, but there aren't any eligibi eligibility conditions, none other than my own, that is. We live in a wonderful country, but sometimes it falls to re fails to recall its fundamental values. Liberty, fraternity, 
In my hotel, I take in people who have been chased from their homes for every imaginable reason. Right now, I have a couple of women who are the victims of domestic abuse, a young woman thrown out of her home because she didn't want to have an abortion, two couples who were thrown out by homophobic parents. Hmm. Does that give you a better idea? Great. These people in trouble, I welcome them, I listen to them, and I give them a moment's peace. Some spend a single night, others stay a month. Most of my guests don't stay long. They leave as soon as they're back on their feet, as soon as they've found housing, as soon as they work out whatever caused them to leave home in the first place. Hmm. There's always room, actually. I've never ever been full, and, and that's what I've come to see you about. You and I, we're on the same wavelength. We're working for the common good. I may be wrong, of course. Uh, am I? No. Good. Uh, here are my rules or requests, if you would rather. Rule number one. You can mention my place to anyone you think may be in need of help. Once you drop them off, I ask them in, I, I talk to them and I take care of them. You're free to go. You don't need to worry about me. I have my own security staff. God, she's got a gun. Rule number two. She's got what? If a someone, gun under there. Seriously. If someone specifically asks you to bring them to my place, you don't do it. Some of my guests are being pursued, hunted, and it would be a shame to let the wolf into the sheepfold. Hmm. Interesting. You got a little weird. Now, I'm going to ask you once and for all. Do you want to help me? A simple yes or no will do. If it's a no, well, then I'll have to find someone else. Yes! Oh, a smile lights up your passenger's face. Here is my card. You and I, we're going to do great things together. I can feel it. She has the <laughs> <laughs> Squeal Good escape. night. Try to stay warm. Wow. So, okay, so maybe we can send the homeless guy there. If we pick him up again. She seems shady. I thought she seemed sweet. Little old lady. Yeah, you're right. Too nice. Too nice. She's the killer. <laughs> no, she's not. She's, too, she's an old, she's old lady. She's the killer. No way. She's a vampire. No, she's not. She is. She's a sweetheart. She's got a gun. She actually has an old gun. She's old equals old gun, Muscal. No, she's trying to help people. It's definitely, definitely evil. Really? No, I disagree. I think she's just an old lady she who wants to help people. She sucked you in. Well, yes, with her sweet old smile. Yeah. And her comforting smell of orange blossoms. It is nice to believe that there are good people out there, though. You know. I think she's good. I think she's good. Um, what next? We've got this ordinary looking guy. Smartly dressed, sort of maidly or school uniformed. Or at least what has she got around her? Oh, yeah. Okay. Maid and then... Very and sexy some Frenchman. sexy man. And a uh, silhouette. Or is this, is, this, is this actually like... It's not, it's not necessarily like... Um, Maybe it's like a more anonymous person or something. It's quite dark. I don't think it's a black person. It might be though. What would you like to choose? Chat. Chat. Where are we going? You pick. Mystery person. Mystery person. Hundred percent murder hotel. I mean, she could be getting vulnerable people there and killing them. Hard to know, isn't it? Yeah. People that have run away, they won't be missed. She was saying the mystery person. Yeah. I think. Mystery, person. mystery, mystery, mystery. I've seen a lot. Looks mystery. like a girl with dreadlocks, possibly. Oh no! Yeah, okay. Look, Francine. Francine Guénard. I need to talk to you. It's a passenger who gets into the cab greets you in uncertain tones. Looks sad. Good evening. Try to answer as warmly as possible. Good evening. Good evening. I want to. She stops short, trembling as if in a panic. Oh no. Is everything all right? No, it's not. I, I, 
Oh, she begins pouring her heart out. Uh-oh. I've lost my cat. Oh, good lord. Uh, oh, I think we accidentally... Took her cat somewhere else. I know, I know. It's pretty silly. It's pathetic, but I lost my cat. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, no. His name is Crookie. <laughs> Have you that's... seen him? Shit. It's the cat oh, the other night. You're oh. sure of it. <laughs> oh, disaster. No. Don't worry. We've, we've got a place we can take grieving people. <laughs> It's run by this lovely old lady. It's 100% not a murder oh, hotel. Oh, we sent the cat to Normandy. <laughs> oh, no. Yes. Listen, I know this is going to sound crazy, but someone saw my cat get into, a, get into a cab. So I called your company and asked which taxis were in the neighborhood that night. He disappeared. Uh, you were the only one. I need your help. Please tell me, you know where he is. Where is Crookie? Where is my cat? <laughs> it's a question of life and death. Um, okay, I feel like we should say Tell the truth. Things. Otherwise, yeah, she, it, she needs closure. I should be worrying where Crookie is the rest of her life. Don't tell her. I think we should, well. Come clean. Aside. She knows. She already knows. She it already her. knows they got into it. I saw him. I saw him. <gasps> oh, that's, that's wonderful. Where is he? Take me there. Uh, he took us a train. Uh, a train? Um. That's where he stole my money. I knew he was up to something. <laughs> He's so smart for a little ball of fluff. Did you talk to him? You remain quiet. I'm sure you talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> the rook is not just any old cat, you know. He saved my life. I adopted him when he was still a tiny kitten. I took care of him. I spoiled him. I fed him for weeks. I took time off work to take care of the little thing. I knew right away he wasn't like other cats. He was different. I stood up for him too. When my friend said he was taking up too much room in my life, I dropped them. When they told me he couldn't come to me with me to work anymore, I changed companies. He's the only reason I get out of bed in the morning. <laughs> Please, I'm begging. I don't know where my accent's going. When my mother died, I decided... To... Oh, because she was too needy. That's why he left. Oh, shit. I thought it would... I take my mind off of things, get me interested in something else, and then... Oh, I'm going to ask you one last time. Do you know where my cat is? Yeah, well... Uh, <laughs> your cat got into my cab. <gasps> I drove him to Saint-Lazare. David? Uh, maybe. He's in the ville. I'm sure of it. He loves it there. Could you, could you stop the car, please? Close the side for Thank you. She loves her case. I know it was a bit too much, too much for him. That might have been a little suffocating, but he was everything to me. And nobody, nobody seems to understand. Nobody. I would just say nothing. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably dead by now. <laughs> that is your fault. <laughs> she gets out of the cab and walks away without shutting the door. Next minute she's gone. Swallowed. Oh no. Oh. Get up. Close the door. Well, I didn't think the cat would c convo would have repercussions. Shit. <laughs> I was crying, my cat. <laughs> I would, uh, that would be like one of my cats would just leave because I'm just overbearing. Barry? It's Barry! Let's go and see Barry. See Barry. Oh, let's go and pick up a cab. Oh, you drive Ooh. by a kebab restaurant. You're overcome by the wafting mm. smell. Yeah. Of meat and fat. Oh my God, is this DJ, DJ Watson? What? What? Not the DJ Watson. <laughs> DJ wow, Watson wow. in my cab. Can I get a selfie up in Woo. here with this? <laughs> The door opens and your passenger collapses into the back seat. His eyes are hidden behind a pair of large, dark glasses. His clothes reek of sweat and booze. Mm, mm, a clubber. Mm, 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 Rumbles his mm, destination mm. and you start driving. A few words are exchanged. The weather, taxes, traffic. Then you can tell it's coming. The inevitable conversation about the killer. Some bits of information, rumors, things overheard. You make a mental note of what you've heard. Who knows? It might come in here. Your mind wanders. Your eyes vaguely scan the store windows. Sodium light coming off the street lamps feels like it's dripping into your brain. You're falling asleep. You need a bit of music to keep yourself awake. 
So he's gone. Turn the radio on, pressing on the dial to find a station you like. I hate when taxi drivers do this. Do what? Turn the music on. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you not like it? Well, they usually ask, but sometimes they don't. Like, sometimes you get into a taxi or an Uber and they're listening to, like, weird music. And yeah. It's very hard to ask them to turn it off. See, I like it when they're playing some bangers, you know, sitting in the back of the car, like, mmm, my jam. I actually don't like it when they're listening to, like, talk radio, because I find that really boring. <laughs> oh, it's always the worst talk radio as well. Yeah. It's always, like, adverts and... And it's staticky. Drivel. And, like, they've got it on, like, a bad frequency, and it's just really... Yeah, the music's like, not as bad, actually. Anyway. Um, 80s rock ballad? Nah. How are we going to annoy this guy? Eternal classical music? <laughs> Rai? What's, What's that? Rai? A mathematician being interviewed at medal he received. His voice sounds... Ooh. An ad interrupts the torrent of words you change the station. Classical music. Electronic music. What's his accent? It's Barry. Yeah. I don't know, how, <laughs> I don't know what Barry's voice is. Uh, should we just make him American? Stop. You lift your head, hand from the dial. The music plays on. Hmm. Not bad. Turn it up so I can hear better. I didn't want to wake you, I'm sorry. I wasn't sleeping, just sobering up. Not bad at all. Ah! Nailed it! He is American. <laughs> Leave it on until they say the musician's name. Music continues, there's something turning in the background. A persistent melody that gets higher and higher. Your client mumbles. I bet. The song is coming to an end and the announcer, in a piercing foghorn voice, throws out the name of a DJ you've never heard of. DJ Blunt. DJ Blunt! I, I know it. <laughs> Blunt! Do I want to question him? You like his stuff? Yeah. Yeah, it's a good product. It's pretty conventionally structured, but it's super popular. Sounds like toilet roll. <laughs> <laughs> Still, I thought that dude everything he knows. Everything. In 94, at a party at the Rex Club, there was this kid who started buying me rounds. <sighs> yeah, kid, no older than 17. I thought he was hitting on me. <laughs> he would have been disappointed. Mm, no, he wanted me to teach him how to spin. I told him no, and that's exactly what he did every week until we moved to the Osiris. He sold X to pay his way in. <laughs> and now he's on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, silence fills the cab. Wait in silence. Sorry, I'm a bit, I'm a bit cl clicking a, a click a wrong just, bit wrong sometimes. Mm, Sorry. It's all right. You know what he did this summer? What? He was the opener for the soccer championship at Stade de France. It was huge. I wonder what people think if they knew he was selling drugs at 17. If they only knew. We don't want to crash, but at the same time, why is he climbing? Mm. Woman crossing the street. We ran into each other in Ibiza four or five years ago. Jump at the sound of his voice. I was spinning in this little club. Yeah, really little, but it was something. He totally ignored me, of course. DJ motherfucking cunt. <laughs> it's the only time I would ever say that word on stream. Jeez. But I had to because it was on. It was. It was there. Uh, your radio. Can you take a flash drive? You can't see your radio. You don't really know what he's talking about. I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> No worries. Hmm. Listen to this. It's what I played tonight. It's mine. He's playing off his phone. He sets his phone to play. But, you know, people were barely dancing. The drum machine playing a hard-edged beat in the background. They were talking, talking about each other's picture. Taking each other's picture. We barely touch. Never kiss anymore. Perfect dance beat becomes progressively audible. All that is over. <laughs> At least, I got people dancing. Drive to the rhythm of snoring. Sound fills the cat. Ideas are bouncing through your head like they do every time you find yourself alone. This guy in the back seat is too old to be young. Look at your own hands. They look like they're suddenly aging in time lapse. Close your eyes a second. Only a second. When you've opened them, you've reached your destination and pulled over to the side. You tap your passenger's knee and he wakes with a start. Shit, yeah? We are here, sir. Ah, yeah, great. He rummages through his pockets and hands you a few rumpled bills from Th there. <clears throat> Thanks, I hope you liked it. 
The music, I mean, my music, the song I played you. I should have been in the spotlight, you see. 15 minutes of fame. Just a minute of... <clears throat> that was whiskey and orange. It's really screwing my system. <laughs> Poor guy. Okay, come on. Crazy. What story? Oh, man. Barry. What a lad, huh? Oh, dirt, no, like, flip, dirty mouth story. idiot. It was the... I had to say it. I was in the character. It was the dialogue. It's weird, like, how there's this thing, okay, where sometimes to get people to talk, you say nothing. Yeah, you just let them, because they're more talking to themselves. It's definitely, like, a psychological thing that I've noticed. Like, people want to feel... Okay, so there's two two things I read. I don't know how true these both are, but this is, this is definitely stuff I read. And one was that, like, in order to get people to like you, mm. you should get them to talk about themselves. People love to talk about themselves. Yeah, Op and the ask open that they questions. Do. Yeah, and yeah. so if you ask if you ask open questions, or you just let people talk to you, or if you're silent, people want to fill the silence with something. And the easiest thing to do for them is usually to talk about themselves. Yeah, a lot of people. I think it was like it's a classic like common thing to do do you know what I mean like it's this thing that happens in these like I feel like when we're like yeah open ended questions that's the sort of way to do yeah. it it's, it's like it's a very queenly thing to do because the queen always used to go and what do you do yeah yeah and it kind of don't ask yes or no questions you know it's, it, and what do you do it's so open yeah well I um, yeah, I, I just bum around bum around I, well, I wipe Flaws, you know, because you put that into whatever context you think that yeah, fits yeah, in. Yeah, you know, yeah. if she's asking anyone, that, are you like, the what cleaner? You mean, what do you, you do here, or what do I yes. do? Do you see what I mean? Or no. you, don't, you don't want to necessarily ask the queen. Oh, what do you mean for a job? You know, because mm. the queen will be like, well, yes, and you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you see what I mean? But Keeps it nice and friend friendly, and also it's it's disarming too, because mm. it gives people a lot of options on how they reply. I it think doesn't like yeah exactly you, d you what, what do they say like if you're like a shop worker like you work in a shop retail like don't ask yes or no questions don't say have you got a kit have you found everything okay because the customer will just say yes you should ask an open question or something like that so they'll like they'll I, i'm s like so they'll you need any help no, they'll just say no, no. so right. you need to ask a question which actually gets them maybe like what um what, what are you what are you looking for today in just here? what 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 and what 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 <laughs> why <laughs> why How? i'm sure that's the thing like you're meant to ask questions which aren't don't, don't just mean they just shut you down by saying no um i don't know yes Lydia, you have to ask open questions there we go what what's a good example charlotte what's a good open question you'd ask in a store i'm trying to think of something yeah i um, don't know like I, I, this is all like interesting psychology the other thing i read was really interesting about like criminals is that you if someone's like in a funny situation with you mm. like coming at you this, don't use this if someone's coming at you to try and push you in a river or something <laughs> they're angry or, or or crazy or like the best thing to do is to well, there's one thing to do um, is to say something that is a, just not gibberish but doesn't quite sound right you know like like to their head so it's almost like you'd say like um, oh I love that flamingo to someone you know going mean? to attack you like there's someone like, like disarm them yeah, yeah but say something that's kind of weird and unrelated yeah. to what's going on and it like it sort of it's kind of mentally like conf like no luck catching those swans then do you know what I mean like like stuff stuff like that like Pibsy just said in in chat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's a thing where you can like it's a Darren Brown thing. That's what it, I think I must have seen on Darren Brown. Ta or take thing. off, start taking off your clothes. I heard that was one thing you can do. It's like a it's like something weird like that you can do. It's not act insane, but it's like like just I've heard that pull them out of yeah. Like, um, pull them out of like the normal normal reactions they expect in that situation like if a group of guys is like mugging another guy if the guy just starts taking his clothes off and like screaming they'll be like what the fuck <laughs> and like and leg it because they're like what are you doing yeah it's like a mentally it's like a mentalisty thing yeah it? like it kind of throws them off guard because that's not what you would expect to happen in that situation yeah it was on that darren brown one where he got him to suck his dick that's right vitamin d i remember that <laughs> fucking hell that's a trifles joke <laughs> 
<laughs> That's a terrible place to end. <laughs> oh, did God. You, did you see that ludicrous display last night? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it just the swan one? Is it like, is it the swan one? That's good. I do CrossFit. That's, oh, I do CrossFit. I feel like I do CrossFit is just a prov provoking thing. Because that's a line that they expect, right? But the thing is, you would never, in that situation, would you? You'd never think to start acting like that. It wouldn't, it would, it's never going to be your first reaction. Your first reaction is either going to just be like, Free, freeze I, like think, I think drunk people who get into fights have done it before and they've almost seen everything mm. they've seen the standard reaction of people being scared or people being passive or people being aggressive back to them yeah. you know they've, they've been through all those scenarios and they're used to them and they always end up in a situation where they feel like they're in control yeah I think if you pro provide them with lines or scenarios or images in their head that completely like confuse them mm. and like why would he say that like yeah. and they have to suddenly like re like rejig themselves and they're uncomfortable and they're like maybe this is not worth me tanking yeah you know what I mean this guy's this guy's a loose cannon this I guy's so weird <laughs> <laughs> he's talking about a flamingo <laughs> I also heard another thing where like if someone is I don't know how true this is but like if someone is gonna like kill you uh, another disarming thing you could do is start talking about make you talking about yourself like I uh, I'm I'm married and I've got two kids their names are thi this and this and um, you Does know that I work? you see that in movies yeah yeah like I and like I'm all um, the time and you'd make yourself into like l not just a mindless person to kill you you, you make them like feel guilty about. Right. You know, I can't. I'm so excited to be well, married. Well, it's because like this can, like, look at this beautiful he's, can he's here. A, he's beautiful. His name is. Does it work? Okay. It's tiny, tiny Tim. Tiny Tim. Tiny Tim. Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> I still got drink in there. I feel like kill. I've just killed. <laughs> what the fuck? And some people are gonna feel bad for Tiny Tim, who is now dead and has been crushed. As soon as you anthropomorphize something, <laughs> you, you, you actually are my crushed drink. about Tiny Tim. <laughs> Tim! <laughs> <laughs> My tango Tim! Anyway. Thing uh, is, yeah, that would happen to me and I'd be like, I've got two cats! And they'd be like, and? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I need me! <laughs> uh, <laughs> Who's gonna feed them and put My them on cats. a train to, to Derville to go to the harbour to get all the fish? <laughs> There's evidence of a murder. A murder has happened. What the fuck did you do to my drink? Anyway, <laughs> that's our stream for today. Um, I'm going to go and meet my dad because he's down and we're going to record some bits of bobs for Yogcon. Awesome. Um, and then I'm going to stream this evening. Coming up this afternoon. Are you sticking around or is this who's, no. who's on this afternoon? That's me done for today. I don't know. There's a stream happening next. Yeah. Thank you. Night call. I'm enjoying it. Oh, it's Harry and Tom Dark Souls. Oh, cool. Is cool. that right? Yeah. Yes. I really enjoyed this game. I, I, I'd like to continue with it next week. I think we can do that, that? yeah. yeah. I'd want to solve mystery. want to solve one of these cases. Um, this stream was sponsored. The next one won't be, probably. But you can always check it out. There's a link in the old um, description. Yes, do right check now. it out. There you go. The link if you want to check it out. Buy Thank it. It came out yesterday. Thank you to MarsFish3. He says, Lewis, uh, on yeah. behalf of the community, I want to give you a big virtual hug. Uh, I hope they haven't been too tough on you. No, it's it's. Gr I'm I'm doing all right, Master. Thank you very much, though. Thank you, Master. And Sunbun ninety two says this is my favourite stream at the moment. Oh. Since I'm on summer holiday in Bristol, Ooh. I can actually watch it live. What do you mean you're in Bristol? Watching it. Watching it live. live? Can't you watch it anywhere? I'm confused. <laughs> are you outside? <laughs> thank, thank you, Sunbun. Sunbun? Are, you, are you in this room? It's raining. Are you under there, the actually. table? Is it raining? Yes. Yeah, well, it was this morning. Oh no. Um, all right. I'm gonna. I'm going to go. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much for checking this out. Um, we'll be back next Thursday at 11 a.m. See you soon. See ya. See ya. <laughs>